Okay. Woo. What's up, y'all? Get in here, get in here, get in here. How y'all doing? Y'all saw the chart. Y'all saw the chart. Apparently, that is the RHOP chart. Y'all, that is RHOP's chart so that they can determine who's responsible for criminal acts, violent acts, um, not just RHOP, Bravo, period, apparently. This is the chart that Bravo uses. Y'all come on in, hit the like button. Hit the like button, please, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all come on in, come on in. Please hit the like button. Put your like number in the chat. Don't forget to use your engagement button on the bottom right-hand side. The circle with the emoji. Please hurry up and do just that. Um, we got to talk. We got to talk. We got to talk. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We got to talk. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. We truly, truly do. Um, part three of RHOP's season eight reunion trailer teaser has been slowly dripping information, just slowly dripping things. So we got to discuss what happened in the teaser, the clip that they just put out. The clip that they just put out was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. It was super triggering. It was so inappropriate. It was a lot to see. You know what I mean? This ain't even a matter of whether we like Candace, don't like Candace. Y'all know, you know, I'm going to say a solid 35 to 40% of the time, Candace gets on my last good nerve. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And I know what I saw. And I know what I heard. So, you know, one of the things that I love to do over here is playing the audio. And we're going to play the audio. And you, if you saw what I put on the thumbnail, Candace is on trial. They literally put this young woman on trial for defending herself. And we're going to talk about it. Um, I clearly laid it out, you know, just in case somebody's cruising by and sees a thumbnail and want to know what the hell we're talking about. It's legit. We have the accuser, we have the accused, we have the amused, and we got the accomplices and the guilty. So we're going to get into all of that in here. Let me greet who's in the room because y'all know I wouldn't be me if I didn't take a minute to say hey to y'all for coming to hang with me because you ain't had to. Okay. And I appreciate it. Love my dogs too. That's my sis. She says she waiting and working. Hey girl, happy Friday. I love my sis. I miss you. You work too much. You need to call me. Before I start pouting and poking my lip out, Vita from Denver, she hit the like button the same time as Love My Dogs, too. And so did Miss Thelma. Thank all of you. Vita, I did not eat anything. My stomach is acting very silly. So, no, I have not eaten anything at all, but I do have my, I got my water. Okay. So, I do have my water. I did take time, though, and do like my foaming face wash thing. And then, um, I use this thing. It's a gray salt, gray salt and algae and some other type of scrub that I use on my face. So my skin, it feels like really invigorated. Hey, Auntie Eva, thank you for being number three. Monique C is in the house. Hey, girl, thank you for being like number five. Happy to be happy. My good sis is number six. And so is Jackie Gaines. Y'all hit it at the same time. TGIF, TGIF. Jen Bunny is here. She's number eight. And so is my sis, Miss Sparkle. But now she told me she can't hang with us today, child. She doing something, but she going to catch us on the replay. Vet is here all the way from Birmingham, UK. What up, sis? Thank you for being number eight. My sister, Tia Bala. Thank you for being here. She is number 10. Number 10. Tay is here. Hey, Tay. How you doing? Happy Friday, sis. Y'all get in here. Please run my numbers up. It's super important. Black and Honest Education. Thank you for being number 15. Hey, happy Friday. Queen of Hearts KS is here. She's number 16. Thanks, sis. Sabra Hardy. Hey, sis. Say, wow, she's tired of being bullied and constantly set up. Can you blame her? Can you blame her? Y'all, this one was a lot. My Kia Kia Coco Pop. Hey, gorgeous. 
How are you? Thank you for being number 14. Sham is number 18. Thank you, sister. Okay. All right. My sister on the phone, let me know she listening on and off. She with us. Partially and partially in spirit. Magdalene, number 19. You and Inel, thank y'all so much. Debbie Garcia is here. So housewife talk is legal as long as we got one of the Debbies. Thank you for being number 18. Philly John, 86. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being like number 23. Lisa Jameson. Hey, girl. Thank you for being 24. I appreciate it. I'm so glad y'all made it in here because I got to get this off my chest. I cannot. I cannot. Okay. Catherine Bennett. Thank you for being like number 26, sis. I appreciate you being here. Rochelle, my sis is number 27. Thank you so much. So, so, so much. Barbara Parker is here from the UK. All right. Thank you for being 28. Our sis, Awa. Hey, girl. How are you? Thank you for being number 34. You and Cream of Wheat, y'all hit it at the same time. I love it. Listen, I got so much to get off my chest. Oh, my God. But y'all, listen, y'all got to sit through this audio with me first. Because I got to make sure we all on the same page, hearing the same things. And then y'all going to know why I put the meter up. Thank you for being number 37. I love cream of wheat. Talking about, well, let's converse. <laughs> and it is disgusting, Jen Bunny. Girl, she needs to prepare a lawsuit. She needs to say that they put her in mental distress because they did. Hey, Meg Scott. They need to make it. Um, She needs to bring out the fact. And every single time Bravo has said they don't. Um, they don't condone violence, but you let someone like you put the child. Don't worry, we we gonna get into it because they they don't ran my my nerves. They don't ran my nerves. My gorgeous niece is here, Couture Bay. Thank you for being number forty. I just watched your video from earlier and put my like in. Hey, Cloud Nine. Thank you for being number fourteen. Oh, and I hope all of y'all, if you don't catch Couture Bay live, please go back and watch her replays and leave a comment. Make sure you like the video. Engagement matters. So y'all, please make sure y'all are doing that. You see the name. That's the same name on the channel, okay? Make sure y'all are supporting because it's important, okay? Please, y'all. Hey, Queena. Hey, girl. Happy Friday. Thank you for being number 38. God's anointed daughter is in the house. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey. Miss Nisi, thank you for being number 44. Happy Friday to you. Give me shelter. You made it in, girl. Hey. How you doing? Thank you for being 47. Who is like number 70? Who? It's 39 after the hour till 40 after the hour. Who's like number 70? Y'all got time to get there if you're not there. Okay? Because I know yesterday I was asking for numbers and wouldn't nobody give me a number. I'm like, well, why I can't get a number? Why, why is it that I can't get a number? What is really going on? I did not understand. I, I couldn't understand it. Okay. So listen, let me do the, the quick housekeeping before we get into the gossip. One, like this video, put your like number in the chat and keep your house, keep your like number just in case I ask you for it. If I ask you for it, probably means I got something good for you. Okay. But you can't get it. You can't win nothing if you ain't in nothing. Okay. Make sure you have your like number. If more than one person has the same like number, I'm taking the first one to put it in the chat. Okay. Snooze, you lose. Move your feet, lose your seat. Okay, so make sure you have your number, all right? And and on top of liking the video, there's an engagement button on the bottom right-hand side. It says circle with an emoji in it. Send bubbles up. I don't care if it's a good bubble, bad bubble. Send the bubbles, okay? Because it lets the people know we're in here and we're engaging and we like each other and we're enjoying the content, okay? That helps me and it helps more people get in because the more people in a conversation, the more interesting it is, okay? Also, make sure that you welcome the people you see in the chat. If it's someone new, say welcome. Even if it's not a first time, people like to feel welcome. Hey, Sheila Kelly Bryant, welcome, welcome. Is this your first time? Please, also, if this is your first time here, Put, put FTL a first time live in the chat so we can welcome you because we want everyone to feel welcome. Nobody should feel tolerated. This is a family environment, okay? These are the mamas, the aunties, the sisters, the cousins. We got a couple brothers and nephews in here, but we talk about them people and we never talk about each other. So keep that in mind too. 
Moniki, hi. You don't know what number you are? That's okay. That's okay. You are welcome. Is this your first time live? If so, welcome. And Marie, like number 52. Hey. All right. Jay Delaray, she's so gorgeous. Hey, pretty girl. How are you? Sweet beloved in the house. She's like number 51. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Y'all make sure y'all are welcoming people here. If you don't, if you've not seen them before, say welcome. Greet people. Say, hey, how you doing? Hey, girl. Talk to folks. Let people feel welcome. Nobody likes to feel tolerated. We all know what it feels like. Let's not do that over here. Quiet Storm 87, our new mama. Hey, thank you for being number 53. Wait, now are you like number 53 or is the baby like number 53? We I need I need answers. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I got questions. Hey, my argument is how are you? Thank you for being like number 55. Cheryl, you made it in in number 54. I appreciate it. So listen. Listen, listen. Who's like number 85? Who got 85? I asked for 70. I ain't get no answer. Who got like number 85? It's 42 after the hour. We got to 43 after the hour. Who's number 85? But, but I sat through the part three of the reunion teaser. It is triggering. I'm going to play the audio. I'm warning y'all ahead of time. That it is indeed very, very triggering. Ah, Patricia Joaquin, I ain't, I thought you was already here. How I miss you. Thank you for being like number 56, Miss Tampa. You know, shock me. Quiet Stone say the baby's 53 and a half. Okay, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Sabra, thank you for being number 56. I appreciate it. So ain't nobody going to cop to being like number 85. Nobody. Okay. No problem. No problem. You, listen, you can't win if you ain't in. You can't win if you ain't in. I need y'all to hit that like button, run the numbers up, run them up, run them up, run them up, and keep your number. Don't miss out. We have fun over here. I, that's all I'm saying. Lord, Jay Delaray said, I'm already triggered and there's more. Oh, there's more. There is more. Oh, you on the break at the second job. You just got here. I don't know why I thought you was already here. I'm like, so I was like, I thought Patricia was here. Cool gamer. Thank you for being like number 59. Always here, always in the building. We appreciate you too, cool gamer. So dig y'all. I'm going to let y'all hear this. Um, like I said, trigger warning. Trigger warning. Um, oh, thank you, Sabra. So let's get ready, y'all. This is, it's a lot. Like, it's, it's a lot. I, I don't even know how else to prepare you for it. Okay, just a different phone. Okay, all right. Well, I'm glad you're here today. I am. I don't even care which phone you use. We just glad you're here. Okay? Barbara, they can definitely make you more triggered. I bet you they can. Bet you they can. Like, people online are super pissed. Everybody is super pissed. So let's let's Earth, just get wow. this. Wendy, wow. I thank Deborah, Candace, wow. Wendy. Wow. Hey, everyone's response. Wow. Y'all want me to be friends with this? Like you want me to make up with this? Well, what did I do? Uh, Here you go again with these blankets. That's either. how. That's how I feel. What did what's Wendy what's to do, with that? do in the she physical altercation? When each time you see me she literally dodging, yes. she not to get. So what she did when she was in the group? But she was Okay, I'll take Wendy out of it. I'll take Wendy out of it. She just on camera. She just took it back. Okay. She took back that Wendy's so, responsible. So no, yeah. but somehow Candace oh. is responsible. Trying to start a business and it being on TMZ for there to be a brawl right. is disturbing. Yes. Candace? Yes. Again, please repeat, because I don't want to quote you. Why did you call her a vomit? When did Berman. that happen? Berman. After she Berman. walked, Berman. Berman. After she walked, walked up to me, right. we, cameras were down. We were standing around. I was standing there with my champagne, dancing, and she walked up to me, came from this direction, walked over, got right in my face, and said, do you have something that you want to say to me? I said, no, come get this vermin out of my yeah, face. No, but you can't do that. Yes, yes, no, I can. I mean, Candace, yes, I can. Call it you cannot calling. tell me how to respond call. to someone who okay, has already well, threatened me being disrespectful to me. Do you think you really would have swung it at her? I, yes. I don't know what I would have done. I know that I turned around. I saw this person lunging at me. I'm not expecting you all to fight for me. 
Okay? So I'm on my own. Okay? I think that Okay, we're going to play it again, but let's let's just get into what we heard the first go round, okay? Um my argument is says no, don't take Wendy out. Stand on it and explain it cuz she she can't explain it. She cannot explain it. She cannot explain it. There is no explanation for this behavior. There is nothing that they can say or do that will explain this away. Nothing. There is nothing they can do to explain this away. At all. You had to go watch. Yeah, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. But we're going to take our time and see everything that's wrong with this. My sis, Patricia Walkie. I'm going to get me a drink. I am. She said, happy Friday and sent me a flower on Cash App. Let me send my sister a heart. That's so sweet. I love you, sissy. You still got to call me. Okay. Wait. No, that's Patricia Joaquin. No, I thought it was my other sister. Patricia Joaquin, thank you. But my other sister that I was talking to, you still got to call me. Yes, it's very pissy. Very pissy. Yeah. Yeah. You heard what you heard, and we're going to hear it again. It was super hard to listen to, Awa. Super hard to listen to. Barbara say, I know, sis, remember, they have triggered me so much, I just can't watch no more. Well, be prepared, because we're going to talk about it. Hey, just simply, say, big crater foot, all of, uh, all, uh, of all people to chastise Candace is absolutely ridiculous. We didn't forget what she did last season. They want us to. They think, they think. That, 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 you know, it's been enough time that we can't remember what she did. They think it doesn't take very much time for black people to just forget when you've wronged any one of us or all of us. No, Turkey Neck was not present when the altercation happened. Now, even though, you know, y'all know I've been taking it light on the super hard drags. Do not be surprised if them drags get real real ugly today because i'm super i'm i'm triggered too like i'm i can't tell y'all nothing about being triggered because i am indeed also triggered i am triggered okay i am yep out there alone out there alone i didn't like it i didn't like it i will say this i feel like now this is like the more we watch of this reunion the more clarity we have on why this girl quit this show Yep, Jay say I'm pissed and Sunday not even here. I might be actually done with our Rachel P if those same girls come back. I, I'm telling you. Hey, Divine, thank you for being 64. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it'll be real easy. Nisi Rose, hey, girl. She listening from the kitchen. Okay, thank you for being 64, sis. Y'all hit it at the same time. I appreciate that. Poetic Lyrics, what's up? Thank you for being 66. Dana Scott, thank you for being 67. Um... So it sounds like they're ganging up on her and attacking her. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like, but it sounds worse than that. So now, let me just say this. Hold on. Give me shelter says, Yaya um, on Twitter said, Andy, is everything all right? Are you worried about a hypothetical scenario where Candace might have actually hit her, but not the fact that the non-castmate ran up and attacked her? Uh-huh. Yep. You can't you can't fit the full quote. I understand they only give you so many characters. Mm-hmm. Hey Delicia, thank you for being 68. So look, first of all, now does that picture make more sense now? I just want you to tuck that in the back of your in the back of your head, okay? Because this apparently is the chart that Giselle is using. This one right here. Hey, Ray Ray all day. Thank you. That's the chart that Giselle is using. Apparently, the darker you are, the more responsible you are for whatever the hell goes on on that set. And we're going to dig into the foolishness. Hey, Larger Curves. Mm -hmm. We're going to dig right on into the foolishness. So first of all, we got Giselle. And who the hell is she to decide who's responsible for something when she's not even in the building? Can we get some understanding on that? So, 
Hey, Esther Thompson, thank you for being 74. Hello, beautiful people. Thank you for being 75. Cream of Wheat said, I'm, oh, I'm over the show. I'm a light bright and I see exactly what they're doing and I have and have done very done to various ladies on the show and I hate it. Gizzard, Rob, and Migo can all go. But that ain't all. We have so much to break down and I'm not going to rush through it. So if y'all in a hurry, I'll see you when you come back. Okay? I'm not rushing through this. I'm going to take my time and we're going to get right into it. Hey, beautiful black, how are you? I love that avatar with that chocolate baby boot girl. It looked good. Yeah, that fashion show with no fashions. But they got Giselle. We, I, I'm telling y'all, I'm going to take my time. Hey, D. Seratinas, I'm glad you're here, girl. Hey, Mac, good good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Sheila Bryant, Ke Sheila Kelly Bryant say, clear people have never have to explain their fear of us. We have to explain or defend. Well, apparently you have to explain why you're defending yourself from violent attacks oh she's a horrible person thank you boo because that's what i'm gonna do yeah trash and show i like that and marie you clever girl i like that i do so look first my first problem what scenario could possibly have happened on that stage what form of conversation could have possibly happened on that stage matt let me answer matt first y'all Mac say why y'all tortured y'all said watching this show this season i i um bailed after last season well Mac, i did it because my sisters didn't want to watch it and this was my way of contributing trying to give one responsible social commentary about a show that is hell-bent on mistreating and assassinating the character of black women specifically and in general. Hey, Malaya, thank you for being 85. Also, because my sisters who didn't want to watch it wanted to know what was happening to the black ladies on the show and what crimes they were committing on this show. And that was my way of giving it to them without them having to sit through it. Okay, so that's why I'm doing it. And some of your sisters, a lot of your sisters in here are not watching this show. Say any other time, just hell would have blamed whoever brought the cop the copyrighted character. Oh, girl, did you say the copyrighted character? See, I can't take you serious today. Cassandra Ellis is number 81 from Texas. Cassandra, this is your first time live. Please put FTL so we can welcome you. Welcome, girl. Welcome from me. Okay. And then, you know, let, let us know. My argument is say Ashley knew what time it was with Deborah and Candace. Ashley already apologized to Candace for bringing Deborah around, not accepting apologies for second offenses. Uh-huh. You say you got all eat. I know that's right. So that's my first problem. Okay. Hey Shannon Campbell. Thank you for being number 85. Poetic lyrics say I still appreciate you for watching for us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Sabra, I think I thanked you for the super sticker, but let me say it again. The audio was playing when it came through. So I want to verbally say thank you, sis. You were actually my very first support of the day, okay? So I wanted to say thank you. That means a lot, okay? Max say, oh, I got why you watch, Nitra. You took one for the team. I only watch y'all reviews. <laughs> yes, I do my best. And like I said, I try to do commentary because there are so many people who are doing commentary, but in my opinion, it's not responsible. If you have a face that looks anything like mine, and you're doing commentary and you're excusing colorist and vile behavior toward black women, that's not responsible. We have people who are gaslighting black women. And when they feel a way about what they see happening to people who actually do represent them, we have content creators that are telling them, oh, y'all are jealous of these yellow skinned people as though we don't have people who have those same complexions in our family. Some of us have children with those complexions. Some of us have siblings with those complexions. And they don't even take into account that some of the ladies who are noticing and are triggered by this bad behavior, we're not the darkest ladies either. I'm not going to sit up here and pretend like that I can compete with Grace Jones on melanin. I can't. But I'm, all, I'm still very much so triggered because in every way that is meaningful, I am a black woman. Those are my sisters. They have a, they represent me. They represent my sisters who are here on this porch. They represent my sisters at the church. They represent my sisters who are my 
homegirls from back home, my classmates from high school, my classmates from college, they represent black the black women that look like us. So when we're triggered by seeing people who look like us, that's why representation matters. But representation can also be triggering when the people who represent you are being treated in a way that you know is aggressive due to the very thing that makes you you, if that makes sense. To Adorable, welcome to the royal family. I need y'all to spam the chat and welcome to Adorable. To Adorable, dear, make sure you send me your birthday in Cash App via email at Shanitra at philsdaughter.com or you can inbox me on Instagram, your birthday in Cash App. We do celebrate birthday for channel members. Okay, stay in touch. We do have family meetings from time to time so you can bring ideas, even a show idea if it's something you want me to cover or if it's something you want to cover yourself. My platform is your platform, okay? So please make sure that you're active. We do a lot of stuff and we want you to be involved. So y'all, welcome to Adorable. I love your name because it's too adorable. Sabra Hardy, thank you so much for the for another super sticker. My sister supporting me. Thank you, sis. But yeah, so that's why it's like, no, I'm, I'm going to cover this type of thing because a lot of our sisters are literally not watching the show and only wanting to see reviews of the show so they'll know what happened without having to give these people a a, a, a view hey wicked 548 thank you for being 92 and when they go to watch reviews and the content creator is also triggering them the content creator is also causing psychological trauma by telling them that how they feel is not valid the fact that they see black women being abused mistreated lied on and maligned should not matter and you only feel a way because you're jealous of someone lacking melanin. Like that is not only gaslighting, it's insulting. It's insulting. So I'm trying to stay in this space and do that. Um, Tracy Q said that video literally has my blood boiling. So I'm, I'm trying to stay in this space and do that so that my sisters can actually get reviews without being insulted. Like it's one thing to avoid a show that's insulting you and then go into content creators who then decide to double down on the insult and then insult you personally. Oh, y'all just don't like them because you're jealous of what? Pray tell. Of what? Of what? Thank you, D. Saratinas. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. But listen, so back to what I was saying, number one, and thank y'all for welcoming to Adorable. I don't see that many welcomes. I see some, but I don't see enough, and I need y'all to spam the chat. I need y'all to spam the chat. I'm not joking. Spam it up. I know we ain't here talking about stuff that's really triggering, but welcoming our sisters is also important. So please, let's get that done. What's up, Tracy Q? My phone just vibrating to another dimension. But back to what I was saying. That I, I'm, I guess we have to watch in total. Okay, I see the welcomes. Thank you so much. Hey, Tiger Eye Oracle. Thank you for being 92. All right. So I'm interested to see on Sunday what, what turn this conversation could have taken so that Giselle would have been given the right and opportunity to tell the ladies who she holds responsible for someone trying to attack Candace and then going to, and then basically blaming Candace for this girl coming to attack her. That's the first thing. Okay. The next thing that I have a problem with just off the top, D Saratinas, thank you for being 76. Um, just off the top of my head, from her opening that latrine she calls the mouth why the hell was the people that she blamed she it's almost like she didn't have a choice except to blame the aggressor she didn't have a choice but to blame her right but then after blaming the person who actually came there and was violent the next thing she did was to blame the only two black presenting women that are a part that that were there at all 
like other than necktie and Kiana, who was hit in the face with a glass. That lovely face of hers, that flawless face of hers, that thing hit her in the face with a glass. Now, when Wendy called her on it, we heard what she said. Oh, stop right there. I wouldn't care if Wendy was sitting on Candace's lap. How would Wendy be to blame if she was standing close, if she was standing far? Like literally, she wanted to blame the black women. She came in there with the express, she came into that conversation with the express intent of blaming the black women. But then when people say you was a colorist whore, no, I'm not. That's insulting. No, ma'am. What's insulting is you're insulting our intelligence. We see very clearly what you are doing. Okay, so then I take Wendy out of it. How gracious of you. If everybody calls me on accusing you of something that you did, you obviously didn't do, then I guess I'll have to back off and not blame you for something you didn't do. But then we go further. Candace put it right on the right on the line and says, hey, you'll take Wendy out, but you're still blaming Candace. And then they proceeded. And Karen, you ain't getting no pass either. You're the elder on the stage and you were not able to bring this thing where it need to be brought. There was no way there was no reason in hell that karen huger should not have been able to say wait a minute let's get things back on track let's refocus this conversation why are we finding a way to try to blame someone who was aggressed dana scott thank you so much for the super sticker sis i appreciate the support priscilla clemens thank you for being 100 why was karen not able to do that just simply saying, Karen pissed me off in the clip. She pretends to be neutral, but she chooses a side. I don't know what she was doing. I can tell you she was absolutely not on point. What If, you, if you're going to be the anchor to a group, be the anchor girl. And y'all know I like Karen, but I don't like this. Why would you then take time to get order out of the chaos? Because at that point, everybody is talking from different directions. Great job in de-escalating the chatter. But why did you not say, let's refocus the conversation? This young woman came here to attack Candace. Why are we finding a way? Why are we searching to find a way to make it her fault that someone fit, tried to physically attack her? Instead, Karen takes the opportunity to say, well, why did you call her a varmin? When really Candace called her vermin. And I'm sorry, but that's accurate. That is accurate. That thing is vermin. That thing is vermin. Why on earth? Hey, Weedy Poo, thank you for being 101. Why would you then say, you know, why, you know, when did you call her or why did you call her? We're going to play it back. Hey, Marcy, say Karen was too busy fixing her darn lips. Girl, <laughs> I like you. Welcome. Is this your first time? What do you mean? I don't care what she called her. I don't care what she called her. So let's talk about that. Why is that something that Candace needs to be on the witness stand for? So now she needs to give testimony as to why she said to get this thing out of her face. Angela Davis, thank you for being 103. I got a problem with that. Why, why is this girl on trial? And Marie say them lips is too heavy. They about to fall. I don't care nothing about how heavy Karen's lips are. They weren't so heavy that she couldn't ask that stupid question. Femi K say that was so disgusting. I got a headache watching that and my heart broke for her and mine did too, but mine started to burn. Let me not say break, mine burned. It, okay, Marcy, this is your first time. Y'all, I need everybody to spam the chat and tell the lovely Marcy, welcome. Welcome, Marcy. This is your first time live and we are happy to have you, okay? Cassandra Ellis, thank you so much for the super sticker, sis. I appreciate it. Tracy Q say, how was Ashley excluded? From who was the blame? Well, you know, you want to know how she was excluded? Look. That's how she got excluded from who was the blame. That's exactly how it happened. 
okay hey delightful by design right but it wasn't just that she had already made threats toward the girl okay it was the putting her on trial it was you need to answer questions you need to explain your choice of words she, are you serious are you serious bravo the same bravo that does not condone violence now what you don't condone is people using words your entire shows your entire platform is about people using words right george ashley knew two girls in the group had a problem with her friend but no blame was on her yeah because you know you saw the chart do i need to refer you back to the chart all right is this your first time live if it is welcome 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 hey duke girl thank you for being 106 okay now mrs two feisty patches hey baby welcome this her first time too y'all i want to see welcomes if y'all don't want to say names just spam my chat with welcomes okay welcome gorgeous um our hop is a hostile workplace and it definitely is especially and specifically if you're a black woman if you're a black woman guaranteed tiara's opinion thank you for being 105 i'm over glizzard too y'all know we renamed her glizzard that's right y'all welcome 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 that's right poetic lyric says now karen we are low-key still wondering why you felt wendy wasn't a good fit and then you make that comment not just a comment she she began that line of questioning she began the line of questioning when candace clearly points out your question like you you are blaming me for someone coming to attack me karen's way of getting control of the situation was to put candace on trial when did you say the word vermin thank you for being 119 safara are you serious lots of first timers welcome ladies yes that was so much to watch and then if that wasn't enough well we're gonna deal with mia thornton separately we're gonna deal with her separately we literally okay thank you and tell mama i said thank you too she said my light mother and i are having color are having colorism convo right now she sees potomac's colorism clear as day at 86 of course of course because our sisters are still our sisters even when they're lighter complected that's why i'm looking at karen like karen you know better because you called it last year but this year you're finding a way to assist them in putting this girl on trial Jen Bunny, thank you for the super chat. She said, TGIF, let's get into it. So what? when did you use that word or why did you call her that? Candace goes on to explain the timeline, the, the, the chain of events, what took place, that, that, that uh, filming had stopped, this thing approached her, asked her, did she have anything she wanted to say to her? And she said, get this vermin away from me, get the help away from me. What's the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? Like I said, I'm gonna deal with me. I know some of y'all want to get her, but not just yet. Cause she, she deserves attention all by herself. Then we see Candace having to stand on her own. Wendy's posture and Kiana's posture said to me on that stage that they were there to support her but they were letting her speak i'm glad that they took that decision because i felt like and i still feel and i will probably always feel like the world really needed to see what was going on the world did not need to see black versus yellow the world did not need to see team a versus team b the world needed a clear depiction that it was all of these people who all conveniently share a similar hue attacking this one black woman to blame her for someone else of a similar hue coming to physically attack her while she was at work and that woman was not even a cast member hey etna crowder thank you they needed to see it um, Mrs. Too Feisty says they operate on a level of hypocrisy that's ridiculous. It's a level of hate. 
a level of hate, unadulterated, reckless hate. And Marie say Robert was enjoying Candace breaking down. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get to her, baby. Only, only one Adrian said, I've been light-skinned all my life, and I can see the colorism and double standards as clear as day. They hate these black women are on the same level and even above them. That is exactly what's going on. Yep, let them speak, and I'm glad they kept talking. It was hard to watch. Leah, thank you for being 119. It was hard to watch. It was indeed painful to watch to a certain degree. Okay? However, it needed to happen. That, that image needs to be out there so we can clearly see who these people are. And then Candace said something because Andy then asked her, were you really going to hit her with that bottle? Were you really going to hit her with it? Something about that question seemed disjointed, okay? Because I told y'all I'm going to take my time. Something about Andy asking the question, um, were you really going to hit her with it? seemed disjointed to me. And I'm going to explain what I mean. When I say it seemed disjointed, it seemed disjointed because were you really going to hit her with it? They were talking about Candace using words and then it clicks over to where you're going to hit her with it. We know they're talking about the bottle, but what happened in that time, in that span, in that space between talking about her using the word vermin and being told that you can't say that, you know, now there's, there's certain words black women are not allowed to say, even when they're being aggressed, there are words that we are not allowed to say, because, you know, there's a different set of rules when you're a black woman, but then it, it, there was no segue. It went straight to where you're going to hit her with it. So then we see Number one, like I said, that was a very disjointed question. It came from somewhere. It felt like it was a cut somewhere. And then she's now on trial for wanting to defend herself physically. Someone is coming to physically attack me. So let's 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 just look at it. You're a black woman on this show with a bunch of non-black women, because I'm not going to call it anything else. These are non-black women, period. OK, this is why no one should be trying to pressure black women to to call people black who are not black. There's no way in hell we should have to. There's no way in hell we should have to call people black who are not black, and especially when they display this much anti-black sentiment. There is no way in hell we should be forced or put upon or pressured to do so. This is why it is damaging. This is why it is wrong to tell black women that non-black women, if they want to be called black, we, we are pressured and we have a responsibility to call these people black. We do not. It is not true. It is inappropriate. So she she's not allowed to defend herself verbally. No. If someone does something to you, and we saw last year, as a black woman on this show, even if you are physically attacked, they will police the words you say. So Wendy was physically attacked by a large Hispanic gentleman by the name of Mia with a drink, a person, a cell phone. And what was on trial for Wendy was what words did you use after she physically attacked you? Not that you physically defended yourself. Not that you punched that ugly hoe in the face. No, you use words after she physically attacked you and you're in it. You're now antagonizing after you were physically attacked. So fast forward to this year, we're now holding Candace accountable for saying, get this vermin away from me. After this woman has lied on her husband, after this woman has made physical threats online, after this woman is now physically in her face for no reason, she is not your coworker. She is not your friend. She is not an acquaintance. You all do not travel in the same circles. You, ma'am, are a Muppet. Candace is a human. So after someone who's made physical threats, threats of physical violence online, lied on her husband, is now physically approaching her, and y'all are not even filming, we, 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 we now are watching 
her words being policed when she says to get this reprehensible creature away from her. That's a problem. And then once this creature behaves exactly the way she looks, her face is violent as hell. And then once her behavior matched her face, why would you pick up something to defend yourself? Are you serious? Are you serious? Were you going to swing it? And poor little Candace had to try to had to try to defend her right to defend herself. This this child sat on this stage and said, "I was not expecting any of you pointing to Wendy or Kiana to defend me. I had to defend myself. This child had a right to defend herself. Like what are we even saying?" So black women, according to Bravo, Andy Cohen, true, truly original. And Team Yellow, those non-Black women on that stage, you cannot defend yourself verbally. And even if some ravenous, confused wildebeest wants to attack you, you cannot even pick up an item, an object of any kind to defend yourself. So apparently, little, little demure, delicate Candace needs to be Mike Tyson. Because, of course, if you're a black woman, you must be aggressive and violent. You must know how to fight. How dare you be black and not be a brawler? I mean, of course, all black mothers take their children to boxing gyms to teach them how to throw hands. Of course, Candace should have been a welterweight champ. I mean, of course, black women don't get to be women. Of course, black women are not allowed to be delicate or demure or fragile. Oh, no, you're a black woman. You know, you're seen as livestock. So why on earth would little tiny Candace, 22 pound Candace, need to pick up something to defend herself against this thing that calls itself a woman, but more closely resembles a caveman? Really? This is what we're doing. Two adorable say, do you see how all these people are cheering that Wendy's home was broken into? Baby, we're not even talking about that yet. We ain't on that. We still on these tramps. Leah said, I've had my feel of these colorist heifers. I grew up around that with three of my daughter, my dad that is high yellow sisters. Oh my, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Cassandra Ellis, thank you for the super sticker, sis. Hey, Shaniqua Belton, thank you for being 130. But hold on. Yes, utterly ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Okay, we're going to listen to this audio again because there's some more things that I want to pick out. There's some more things that I want to pick out. Malaya says a rabies infested Muppet attacked her. She had the right to defend herself. Right. She doesn't know if that thing has had its shots or not. She doesn't. But I'm going to play this audio again. Ladies, get prepared to clutch your pearls. But I feel like I feel like we need to hear it again because there's some more things that I want to pick out of this awful exchange. More things that I want to pick out of this awful exchange. Okay. I thank Deborah, Candace, wow. Wendy. Wow. Hey, okay. everyone's response. Wow. Y'all want me to be friends with this? Like, you want me to make up with this? Well, what did I do? Oh. Do you go again with these blankets? That's how, that's how I feel. What did what Wendy do with that? Did you hear that, whore? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stop that in the middle like that. But did y'all hear that, whore? By that, whore, I mean Glizzard. Because she is, she she's giving Lizard right now. By whore, I mean Glizzard. Did you hear Glizzard? Did you hear that whore? Hey, Tammy Carter. She said, that's how I feel. So, hey, this one. So, hey, he, he, L-E-L. So basically... She's figured out in her pea brain with her room temperature IQ, with her tube sock neck, with her kielbasa sausage legs, with her rotten box, she's figured out that all she's got to do is say, well, that's how I feel. And you can get a lie over the, over the goal line. When Wendy first called her out and was like, why am I being blank? That's how I feel. Hey, Connie Johnson. How do you feel something? Number one, you weren't there. Hey, Miss Dogan to you. 
Number one, you wasn't there. Number two, saying someone is to blame for something, that is not a feeling. That would be true or false. No one can be to blame for something if they're not to blame for something. That That's how I feel. I feel like you're disgusting just like your daddy. I feel like you a loser just like your mama. I feel like your children lost the, lost the parental lottery when they got stuck with a piece of trash like you. I feel like NBC Universal is showing their racist pants. And I also feel like until y'all do right by Nene Leaks, everything you touch, everything you touch gonna fail. From the time that sister called them out for being racist, from the time Mariah Huck had to sue them for trying to steal a whole show from her. These people have been getting exposed small by small, and it has not stopped. Hey, Trey Gaming Fish, thank you for being 136. No, she ain't smart at all. At all. Right, feelings are not facts. And yes, she is garbage. That's how I feel. Feel? You made an accusation and then called it a feeling. You see what happens when you let low budget gutter garbage get away with, with, with certain behavior? It only repeats because she was able to get away with that alley cat behavior lying on Chris Bassett calling it a feeling. You, We see her repeating it again. So I'm going to start it over, but I just couldn't take it. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me. Let me let me let me let this line, this line bucket mouth whore start from the beginning. Let's go. I thank Deborah, Candace, wow. Wendy, wow. Hey, everyone's response. Wow. Y'all want me to be friends with this? Like, you want me to make up with this? Well, what did I do? Uh, Here you go again with these blankets. That's either. how That's how I feel. What did what Wendy do, to do, with that? do in the she physical altercation when each time you see me she virtually dodging? Yes. Not she to get. So what did Wendy right do? She was in the group, but she was Okay, I'll take Wendy out of it. I'll take Wendy out of it. She just took it back. Okay. She took back that Wendy's responsible. So no. But somehow Candace is responsible. Mm -hmm. Trying to start a business and it being on TMZ for there to be a brawl right. is disturbing. Yes. First of all, ho, you ain't tried to start no business. Mm -hmm. Y'all got the same six items on your goddamn website that you been had on there. You don't have not one more item on there. You selling a sock, a baseball cap, some real random type stuff. So I'm trying to understand what the hell, what the hell is starting a business a fashion show with no fashions again we've already done this so you even even in your failed ventures you're not even original you even had to steal that from a black woman shout out to sheree whitfield officially the first woman on anybody's network to have a fashion mm -hmm. show with no fashions mm -hmm. the first and i mean the first love my dogs too sent me a cash up Thank you, sis. I love you. You going to a meeting? Okay. I appreciate you. But you ain't starting no business and seeing it on TV, TMZ because of a brawl. It was a brawl because your other friend in Team Yellow came up with this stunt. And I still believe all of them were in on it. Nobody will convince me that all of them were not in on it. You're not going to convince me all of them were not in on it. They were already prepared to blame Candace for why she was being attacked. Let me let me inch it back. I'm sorry, y'all. Took it back. Okay. She took back that Winnie's responsible. So no, but somehow Candace is responsible. Um, trying to start a business and it being on TMZ for there to be a brawl right. is disturbing. Yes. Candace. Yes. Again, please repeat because I don't want to quote you. Why did you call her a vomit? I don't want to quote Miss Quote. Why did you call her? It, does, it doesn't matter why she called her that. It doesn't matter if she called her that. It wouldn't matter if she called her a snuffleupagus. It wouldn't matter if you call her the dragon from uh, Mulan. It don't matter what you called her. I can say anything that I want with my mouth. These are words. These are words. Bravo has literally gone from we don't condone violence to we condone violence against you if you're black and you say something we don't like. But let's just keep going because I want... The person I want y'all listening for now is Mia Thornton. When did that happen? 
Barnett, after Barnett, she Barnett, walked, Barnett, her, after she walked, walked up to me, right. we cameras were down. We were standing around. I was standing there with my champagne, dancing, and she walked up to me, came from this direction, walked over, got right in my face, and said, "Do you have something that you want to say to me?" I said, "No, come get this vermin out of my face." No, but you can't do that. Yes, yes, no. I can. No, no, but you can't do that. So wait a minute. Let's get this understood. Edward James almost. Mia is saying, you can't say to get vermin away from you, but you can throw glasses, you can throw purses, you can throw cell phones. Really? You can't say get this vermin away from you, but you can lie and say somebody's husband was watching you when he clearly wasn't. You can't say get this vermin away from you, but you can lie and say somebody's husband wanted to toss your salad. You you can say all of those things. You can do violent. You, you can commit violent acts toward other people on your cats, but you can't say get that vermin away from me so when speaking about someone who's not even on payroll, who should not even be in your face. Really? So does that mean then anybody who is a viewer, who is a fan, who watches the show, can walk up to you? Can walk up to you on the street? And just get in your face. You got something you want to say to me or, 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 or become belligerent with you and make physical threats online and then approach you in person. And, and you are beholden to them to watch your mouth. Okay, I want y'all to hear that again. I want you to hear it again. Right in my face and said, do you have something that you want to say to me? I said, no, come get this vermin out of my face. No, but you can't do that. Yes, yes, no. I can. You can't do that. I mean, yes, I can. You, call it you cannot calling. tell me how to respond to someone who has okay, already well, threatened me being disrespectful to me. Well, that's why she threw the drink. So let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. The mangy Muppet threw a drink. Because Candace said, get the vermin away from me. Because you approached her when you weren't supposed to. Because you didn't like that she called you Sesame Street. Because you lied on her husband and then made physical threats online. And somehow that's Candace's fault. Angela Knox, hey darling. She says, this show is disgusting. It's sickening. I would not be watching this show next season. I hope they cancel it. And so do I, baby. So do I. Rosie says, hey, queen. Hey, hey, queen. Hey, sister queen. So I've been watching from the bushes. Thought I'd pop in and say hello. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, beautiful. You are so lovely. Poetic Lyric says, it took those dummies teaming up against Candace and they still are failing miserably. Yes. What the, it's almost as though their gang up on Candace, in my opinion, is going to be and has been their undoing. They are exposing themselves. Cream of wheat say they call each other B-I-T-C-H's. Why is vermin an issue? They have to miss me with the hypocrisy. Please do. Please do. I'm so glad y'all catching the bull crap. Max says the hypocrisy of these heifers. Yes. Delightful by design say delayed. She can say what she wants, but you can't put your hands on anybody. Right. Words do not equal I can physically attack you. It does not work that way. Give me shelter says truly original also produces basketball wise. Remember the OG season, how they mishandled the issue of colorism and racism. I'm starting to think they are behaving like this on purpose. Of course they are, because we saw what they did to OG after OG, you know, stood up for herself. They made her film the reunion in a separate room. Like she, like she was some sort of animal, like she was so out of control when she never touched anyone, anyone even though Evelyn Hosada had physically attacked several people. Awa says they need a criminal defense attorney and a prosecutor to sit with these girls and teach them the meaning of assault. The ignorance is intolerable. Intolerable. It is, baby. Tracy Q says, I said it once and I'll say it again. Collectively, as a people, we must boycott this trash box show, tanking the ratings into the depths of hell. I totally agree. Hey, Ace, thank you for the super chat. Said, but then Candace is supposed to call you to check on you on your divorce. Baby, if you, Ace, listen, auntie ain't never seen you before. But if you don't let the Lord use you today, you see, y'all see what happened when you just let the Lord use you. Ace, my God will bless you for me. You Did y'all see what this baby say out of the mouth of babes? But then Candace is supposed to call you to check on your divorce. Why are you telling her 
it's okay for you to be assaulted because you said get this vermin out of my face words equal you should be physically assaulted but it's my responsibility to call and check on you when you destroyed your house with your own coochie your own cat destroyed your house but i should call and check on you thank you baby and thank you for the super chat brian say i plan to be drinking when i when when, when i watch the final part of this show i'm gonna need drinks to watch the final part of this show now i'm just telling you the truth i don't see me watching this without a i mean a large margarita in my hand a large one say plus mark lamont hill champion that too oh mark lamont hill is one of the hugest raccoons on anybody's platform anybody's tiger i oracle say freedom of speech is a thing not freedom to be violent thank you and sent and and, and but, but that's the behavior of those things it just i feel like watching this play out is even more evidence that black that black women are not inherently violent because we don't see the black women on this show displaying violent ideations no we don't we see non-black women displaying violent mm -hmm. ideations toward mm -hmm. black women that's what we're seeing that's what i see that's what i'm looking at i mean unless we're watching a different show i see that sabra says i am 62 and 250 pounds as i'm still as i'm still disabled mm -hmm. i'm from brooklyn and i still got hands and feet and you know what praise the lord because that's the blessing that you still got strength in your hands and feet to defend yourself against wild animals that's a blessing but let me say this though it is a blessing it should not be necessary black women should not be under any responsibility to be prize fighters because people cannot control what we say we have agency over our bodies and our mouths we have a right to speak up it's giving 1950s america you black girl you better not say something i don't like now that's what it's giving miss dogan says not going to say what you say may not get you slapped but it's still not right but this is the thing i will say any and everything out my mouth and i and i promise you i can promise you with everything in me if you pick up your hand whoever whoso never you may be if you pick up your hand bless the lord and think that you're gonna touch shanitra because you don't like something that came out my mouth let me tell you let me tell you with all my blessed baptist soul baby i will beat the fleas off you the the pure fleas i mean that the fleas and the fur because i can say whatever i want to say out my mouth because let's not pretend when it and not you miss dogan i know i know where you coming from but what i'm saying is let's not pretend candace mouth wasn't open because that muppet's mouth was open first see this is where the problem come in i can dig you a little bit if somebody just walks up and dry insults you or says something that's so vile that it catches you off guard, I can't justify it, but then you can kind of make me understand it. But when your mouth is the one that opens first, when it was Deborah's mouth, Deborah, when it was that animal's mouth who opened first, you can't tell me how to open my mouth in response to your mouth. She opened her mouth first, allowing that woman's husband. She opened her mouth again to then antagonize that woman's husband. She opened her mouth again to make physical threats online. And then she opened her, her that latrine, that outhouse that she calls a mouth in person and then walked up on that girl. She closed space and walked up on that girl. Now, what's crazy, what's funny, what's hilarious is that if Candace was a girl like me or like some of you, she might have went ahead and popped that hoe in the snot box as soon as she walked up there. I would have. I would have pulled a baby, a, a little baby. Not little baby, the the baby. I'd have pulled the the baby when Danny Ho brother walked up on him after running online talking about it's on site. I'm gonna knock him out, and then walked up on that man. And then when the man popped him, now you want to sue people. That's what I would have done. She'd have walked up on me, and I'd have mopped the floor with that ugly hoe. Now that's what that's what Nitra would have did. But Nitra from Ocala, okay? Nitra's a different type of girl. But just because I'm that way, it don't mean, it don't mean that I feel like every black woman has to do that. There is no responsibility 
on black women to beat the hell out of people. Candace had every right to use her words because that thing used her words. You don't use your words and then tell a black woman you're not allowed to. I can use my words, but you're not allowed to. That's not okay. That's not okay. And then when the black woman uses her words in response to your words, you decide to get violent. And this is just a PSA for people who look like Deborah. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else is that unfortunate because that is one unfortunate looking creature. But to everyone who looks like Deborah, if you're under the sound of my voice, if someone shares this video with you, if you listen on a replay and you know you look like Deborah, this is just a PSA. Just because you're ugly, it don't mean you have to be violent. Okay. I want you to let that seep into your spirit. Just because you're unattractive, it don't mean you have to be violent. Now, I don't know who Alexis is, but Alexis sent me a cash app. Thank you so much with the cake. Thank you. I like the pictures. Them pictures make me so happy. Just because you're unattractive, it doesn't mean you have to be violent. Violence is not something you have to do. You don't have to do that. Hey, Nene, Ashley, thank you for being 161. But did y'all hear Mia? And, and that's why she hit you. Let's keep going. I know it's tough. Do you think you really would have swung it at her? I, yes. I don't know. Now, did you hear that? Do you think you really would have swung it at her? Don't don't it feel like we missed something on that conversation? Am I tripping or, do, or does it indeed feel like something was cut out? Because we're talking about words and what you said. And then all of a sudden, it switched to, do you really feel like you would have hit her with it? But let's listen what I would have done. I know that I turned around. I saw this person lunging at me. I'm not expecting you all to fight for me. Okay. So I'm on my own. Okay. I think that was a lot to hear that child. You know, that was one time I know she can be over emotional at times. And, and again, that is indeed your right. Um, however, it was a lot to see her emotional that time because I understood the emotion that time. Being emotional over Robert, I don't really get it. You know what I'm saying? But she really thought that thing was her friend. You know, I don't cry over friends like that. I, I don't. I don't. My friends are actually my friends. We don't do each other like that. And if it ever came down to, oh, you going to break friend with me over something and see you later, bye or not. But this time I understood the tears. Now, in that moment, in that moment, Robert was laughing. Robert was laughing, mm -hmm. sitting over there sniggling. Hey, Whitney from Houston, how you doing? Another lovely lady. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This the thing. What you laughing for? Wasn't you just crying? Because somebody pointed out your colorism. And so now because your your fellow non-black women are attacking this black lady and she's having she's being put on trial on national television and she's emotional about the fact that she was on her own to defend herself, or at least that's how she felt. That was funny to you. That didn't upset you at all. Being called out on your colorist behavior, that upsets you. But this young black woman being aggressed and then put on trial publicly, like literally being, I don't want to use inflammatory language, but being lambasted, accused, villainized, attacked. That's why I put that on my title. Bravo attacks black. Bravo attacks black. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I wanna point out. some things okay i'm trying to choose my words I'm trying to choose my words because y'all know how i can get crip crip say ashley needs to be let go i'm tired of her and her forehead but the first time i'm funny you mentioned ashley um yeah right i'm with you awa andrew says this girl was assaulted before on this show and it's okay if she had even picked up a chair to defend herself right they didn't even take into account that she's been attacked before and she wants to defend herself, even though in that other situation, I felt like they were equally at fault. 
Um, Rosie says Rob did the same thing when Wendy was attacked by Mia, so not surprised. Right, right. Mind you, Mia attacked Wendy, and Wendy defended herself with words. That's all that took place. That was it. But it's funny you mentioned Ashley because Ashley was Ashley was conspicuously silent during that segment. Did y'all hear her mouth? Because I showed it. I ain't hear her say nothing, and she's the one. Who brought that? Who, she's the one who brought that Gila monster to attack that girl. Ace says, "Yeah, that was difficult to watch, considering Andy and girls had the same stance when talking Mia, when they were talking Mia versus Candace season six and Wendy season seven. Right, right. They are you, right, baby? I love you. I just met you and I love you. Ace is pointing out some things here. I'm telling you, the Lord is using this baby today." Mia versus Candace season six. What were they saying? Black lady, your words. Your words, black woman. Your words. We can attack you with words, but if you respond with words, you need to be whacked. You need to be put in your place. Season seven, Mia tried to lie and insinuate inflammatory, incendiary garbage against Dr. Wendy and her husband their relationship more or less and when wendy told her girl i don't know what y'all do we don't do that that's all she said and that large hispanic gentleman became violent with a drink a person a cell phone and wendy simply simply only defended herself with words and she was told black woman your words control your word black woman everybody can say whatever they want to say to you they can be verbally abusive they can even be physically abusive but black woman your words your words have to be policed and here we are again in season eight this baby here is a blessing to me ace i love you and here we are again in season eight and now we're bringing people who not even own the cast to attack cast members and even that's allowed now i know overtaking is allowed but even that's allowed as long as the person you're bringing them in to attack is a black person it's allowed And we're not even going to call it a problem. The person who brought her there to attack her is sitting there quiet. Quiet as a whore at a revival meeting. Quiet. You can hear rat piss on cotton down on that end of the couch. Quiet. We're not even talking about that. What's important here is let's put this young woman on trial for using her words to defend herself against somebody. Rosie, it sounds like a plantation to me too. And I don't really like that. I don't really like it. Deborah Randall, hey girl. Well, Awa, sis, when you tell me what else Mia Thornton looks like, I'll call it that. All I get is large Hispanic gentlemen. That's all I got. Um, simply, just simply said Sesame Street should have been banned after her lies were debunked last season. Right. But no, that's allowed. It's allowed. Hey, born to be wild. They telling you it's allowed. As long as your victim is a black woman, it's allowed. That's what they're telling you. Nisha says the show is disgusting to watch. I'm not even finishing it or turning it in for next season. I'm done. It's triggering. And that's the response that I want from black women. Ashley has no shame. She's sitting down there quiet, lips glued together. Lips glued together. Like she holding something in her mouth. Pun intended. Looking in her lap. Looking beside herself on the seat. Looking at her shoes. While Candace is being put on trial for thinking she might that, that she might need to defend herself. She needs to give an account for how she was feeling when she picked up an object because a Gila monster was coming to attack her. This tire biter. Because y'all not going to tell me that Deborah girl that her face does not look violent. She looks like she chases parked cars. Edna Crowder said, we really need to boycott this show and do and do Awa says can you imagine if it was candace or wendy who brought 
a black presenting woman to an event to fight a castmate. Girl, they defied them, called the police. Bravo does not contain violence. It is unacceptable for non-cast members to be brought on set to attack cast members. This is unacceptable. This is unconscionable. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Quite frankly, if you ask me, if Candace hadn't quit, that would have shown that she had zero self-respect. They can talk about your lie on you, make you a villain, police your 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 wording, your ability to articulate. They will police everything about you. They will attack your marriage, your mother, your your the fact that you come from money and you weren't living in trailer parks and on, on, on the side of the road. And now we're going to physically attack you and support it and champion it and put you on trial for it. And Robert is going to sit over there looking like the nature boy, Ric Flair, sniggling and chuckling. And let me see if I can send that picture because y'all got to see this. I, I just want you to have a close up picture. I want y'all to have a close up picture of what Robert was doing while Candace was on trial. I do. I do. I just want y'all to see this for yourselves because I got the steel shot. I got the steel shot and there are no words. That, and y'all know I seldom lack words, but I feel as though I am ill-equipped with words to describe the look that was on her face. She was enjoying this young woman being attacked after someone came to physically attack her. She was enjoying every, every minute of it. She thought it was cute. She thought it was cute. Why she thought it was cute is beyond me, but she did indeed think that it was cute. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Y'all, this is something. Let me get Koku's comment and I'm still going to pull. Ashley asking if the cameras were down. Robin hiding behind production and Ashley calling Big Boss to report their setup went left. At this point, production was in on it too. I believe that. I said from the gate, I believe it. Hey, Belicious28, how are you? Let me just show this. Let me just, I want y'all to see the look on her face. I want y'all to see how she was enjoying herself. Look now, look, just look. Mm -hmm. Take a look, this is the look on her face. This is the look on her face while Candace is on trial. This is the look on her face when Candace is clearly, and this time logically, upset because she's having to explain why she felt the need to defend herself against this thing coming to attack her. This is the look on her face when Candace is expressing that she was alone, and or at least in that moment, she felt alone. Right in Marie Candace, this is your friend. This is your friend. 
See, this is why those clear adjacent tears didn't move me. I've never been accused of that. I've never been accused of colorism. This is why that didn't really move me. Because look at this thing. This is the behavior of non-black women. L let me tell y'all something. This is the face of non-black women who demand to be called black. Th this is their response to your pain, black women. And let's be clear. Look at this thing. Robert is not pretty enough to be making such faces. Pretty enough. She ain't never been called. She's never been accurately described as pretty a day in her life. She can't afford to make such a face. Not looking like she looked. Yet here she is with that thick weave piled up on top of her head with her extra wide shoulders sitting up there looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger's baby brother. This thing, this thing, this is what she did. This is what she did. Yeah, get a good look at it. Look at this creature. Look at this middle-aged clear man, this middle-aged white man, sniggling and grinning because a black woman was aggressed and felt like she needed to defend herself because she felt like she was all alone. Isn't that something? Isn't that just something? Mm-mm-mm. I just thought y'all would want to see that. Thought you would want to see it. Is that Juan's roommate? Yeah. No, that's Juan's, that's, that's Juan's foster mama. The landlord. He don't pay no rent there. Nisi Rose say head, shoulders, wig. Misery loves, truly loves company and does. Oh yeah, baby Sylvester Stallone. All that. All that. Yes, Barbara, no class. No class. Ace E said, I thought this was edited, but this goes hand in hand with Giselle flop moment. Tears, tears. They are one and the same. Yeah, they're both trash. You know, water seeks its own level, seeks its own depth. And those two, those two trollops, both of them have all the depth of a dingy, dirty rain puddle. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, yes. Nisha says it wasn't a problem when they were grilling Katie about color and race. Oh, yeah. You know, we played the audio from that just the other day. If it wasn't yesterday or a day before, whenever. Mm-hmm. That's the nature boy, Ric Flair. Tracy said Candace better never be friends with that large white man again. It's disgraceful. Mm-hmm. Say, this is why Juan embarrasses her at every chance. You think so? I don't know. Delightful says, according to Mia, they, that, they are a sisterhood. Yeah, I'm like, what, what type of sister does that? Mm-hmm. Say, with that crunchy, stiff bob. Mm-hmm. It's another case of you ain't really got no black friends. Look at your hair. Ace E say, just like when she put her phone up to record Wendy and Mia, SMH, the slip definitely showing. Ace, I love you. Don't you ever go nowhere. Okay, Ace, don't leave us, please. I, You know, I love you. Ace, help me think. Because it's like, by the time this baby remembers something that I ain't remember right, I'm like, yeah, that too. Yes, don't you go nowhere. That. She looked equally as stupid. Re recording Wendy saying fight fight because mm -hmm. those those non-black women are really not classy they really are hood boogers and I keep telling y'all that I told y'all that from the time they went to Monique's house what was it a lake house or something cabin or whatever and they was up there jumping on the beds I'm like look at these hood rats look at these hood boogers just trashy KK say the way some people defend Giselle with her nasty self I stopped watching since Monique a lot of people did. A lot of people did. But I want to point out something else to y'all. I do. And the reason I want to point this out is because, hey, the Divine Miss M, thank you for being like number 180. I want to point this out because 
when it pertains to anything in the public eye, especially Bravo. Oh, um, especially Bravo. What I have seen take place more times than not is when a black woman is mistreated on this network, on any of these franchises, the first thing that said is, well, if, if you weren't doing this, if you weren't doing that. So I want to look at two people that production has made it their business to give them the villain edit. So I'm, we're going to make you the topic of social ire. We're going to make you the target of, of attacks. We're going to make you the target of a bad narrative, right? Every time they do it, there, there are some parallels, right? So if you look at the, the way they tried to do Candace and Wendy, okay? We're going to make you the targets of public ire. We're going to show that you're a bad friend. Why didn't you call me up? We're going to show that, you know, oh, your mouth is so bad. It's your mouth. It's okay if we attack you, your mouth. When they sat on that season six reunion, was it six? Six? Yeah. Season six reunion. And, and told Candace, well, if Mia, Giselle it was, that told Mia, tells Candace, well, if Mia had hit you, in your, hit you upside your head, then I would have been okay with it or something to that effect because she said, your mama, everything, it's your mouth, it's your mouth, it's your mouth. Candace, really, her mouth is elementary. Her mouth really isn't that bad. We've seen worse. We've seen worse. Then we see her come on this stage and everybody's going to get gang up and attack her and she's being vulnerable and she's showing her feelings and see and it's still a problem we got sniggling and giggling we got all this going on the andy cohen you're supposed to be the host he's joining in with the shenanigans putting this girl on trial but if i take y'all back a little bit you y'all remember um i wish i was like an encyclopedia that i could just remember which reunion which season or whatever but on RHOP, when everybody was just coming at Lanethia and Nene was just laughing it off like, OK, I'm that one and just laughing it off and not, not giving them the energy they want. When Cynthia Bailey sat up there and started trying to curse, I don't give a D-A-M-N and, and Nene laughed at her like, ooh, we cussing now. Because the hot mic moment exposed Cynthia's lies that, oh, I'm going to just say I didn't know she was coming. Y'all remember that? And when that happened, it was. Oh, Nene's too full of herself. Oh, see, um, she you know, she wasn't vulnerable enough. She just kept acting like she was above them. She was being superior. Now we got a young black woman who's being vulnerable. She's being open. She's talking about her feelings. She's telling you how she felt in that moment. And she was being physically attacked by somebody who's not even a member of cast. And either way, I just want y'all to see, it don't matter either way it goes. When you're a black woman and they've decided that you're going to be the villain, they're going to make you the villain either way. If you decide to put your nose in it and say, oh, well, everybody coming for me, apparently I'm that girl, you're superior. You think you're better than people. You need to humble yourself. Your head too big. But when you say, hey, I'll even take ownership that some of the words I said made you uncomfortable. And then I'm going to sit up here and be vulnerable. And I'm going to let you know that in that moment, I didn't know what was happening. I was under attack. I felt alone. I didn't expect anybody to fight for me. Now we sniggling and laughing and you're still the villain. So my point is when it comes to Bravo, NBC Universal, truly original, Andy Koken, the Powder Ranger, Team Yellow on that stage, it don't matter what you do. Black woman, you're guilty because you're guilty. Simple. That's it. That's all. Now, I'm going to put the stream yard here. And then I want to make a quick mention of the fact that Dr. Wendy and her husband, their home was burglarized while they were on vacation in Jamaica. Now, I knew they were on vacation in Jamaica because I saw lovely pictures of her in this lovely yellow ensemble we saw them cute little babies with their little toes in the sand we saw pictures of mama daddy and children and i when i immediately saw the news i said wow that's unfortunate people are truly terrible that's unfortunate and then 
I started seeing people that were, like our sister said, maybe an hour ago, like thinking it was funny, making jokes about it. Someone says she wants to be like Dorit. Who the hell wants to be robbed? They said they, they, they stole high-end items. They stole Birkins. They stole jewelry. And we know Birkins are not cheap. Like, if you buy one used, you might get it for like 11, 12, 13,000. Like, those bags are not cheap. That was very dirty um, to steal from that lady. And um, I even saw people with xenophobic comments. Like, oh, if she's Nigerian, she's guilty. I was very disgusted. And this is what happens when you allow in xenophobic rhetoric. This is what happens. And I found it disgusting. Like, why was it funny? Marlo had a whole home invasion. Then she, they had to go to a safe room. They had to go to a safe room. This is not a matter of let's make a joke. Let's, you know, anything. Because like literally shows like this, the type of narratives, the type of environment that's being created by Bravo and NBC Universal is so that let's it's basically let's beat up on black women. So even if you are attacked, if you're robbed, if some, God forbid something even worse happens to you or your children, oh, it's okay. Let's beat up on black women. I thought it was absolutely disgusting. Um, and I just wanted to say that I'm sorry that happened to her. Um, but I also want to point out, I want to point out that um, ladies, this is ladies, gentlemen, anybody, when y'all go out of town, please, I know you like to post your pictures on social media. Please don't post them till you get back. Don't let anybody know you're gone, please. Because sometimes people will wait to see when you're gone and they'll come and rob you. And I saw some people that kind of took it the other way, which was kind of crazy to claim, you know, blaming other cast members for sending somebody over. I wouldn't do that. I don't like the idea of that because we don't know that. So saying that kind of thing is irresponsible, but just, you know, sometimes when you online, you're posting your goodies, you post yourself shopping, you post yourself on vacation, people then know you're not home. And then they go and they watch your house and decide to come steal. But, you know, y'all just be careful for everybody. I'm sorry that happened to her, but I'm I, overall, I'm glad that, you know, nobody got hurt because what if she had left her mama over there? You know what I mean? So it, it could have went terribly wrong, but hopefully she, um, ho hopefully they're able to file their insurance claims and all that good stuff and get everything back to normal. Yeah, Tracy, I wonder if they called a check on her. You know, they didn't. And you know, Andy's not going to hold them responsible and tell them y'all should have checked on Wendy. They Absolutely not. Because you remember, she's a black woman. It's only the black women that are responsible to call and check on people who've abused them. Okay. L. Andrea says, how close was Deborah in proximity to Candace and Wendy to have heard them talking about her in the middle of a party? It made no sense. Deborah came to fight that night and Ashley knew it. I agree, darling, and welcome. And you're right. Nisha, tell me what you think, baby. I, the show is just super infuriating to watch when it's blatant actual racism going on but people don't take that serious because the racism is being committed by other black women they're not black well what we consider you know the no same, they by not by non-black women who are cosplaying as black and who will move around in black what is Giselle? she is someone who is non-black but she mo she moves around and she exists in black spaces. There are a lot of people who exist in black spaces who are not black. Mm -hmm. These are non-black women. Mm -mm. Well, what we're seeing, you know, what they're being perceived as black women. I just don't understand how a certain standard is being held for Candace and Wendy, but it's not being held for Giselle. How in the world can you sit and say out of your mouth that it's Deborah, Candace, and Wendy's fault? Wendy said nothing to the woman. That girl was over in a whole other section with her friends or whoever she supposedly came with and walked over to Candace to ask her if she had anything to say. First of all, she shouldn't have been there because your, everything that she lied about last season was debunked and she was proven to be a liar, so she came with malicious intent. So she shouldn't have been there. Then second of all, we've already had our verbal sparring on Twitter, the internet, or whatever. You lied. I know you lied. I have nothing for you. So why would you come over and ask me anything? 
you shouldn't be anywhere near me and my friends or the cast at all, period. Right. Then you have the nerve to turn around and say, well, why did you pick up a bottle? Candace is, what, five foot one or something? That girl is towering over her, asking her a question, and she's already aggressive from what we saw. Deborah is aggressive. So if this big ass girl is coming over to me, and I'm this little, and like she said, I'm not expecting anybody to, to defend me because I've not been defended no season I've been on this cast. So if I'm watching this person walk over to me, I don't know if you're coming to hit me or talk to me. So yes, I'm going to pick up a bottle. Then the initial start of the interaction was Deborah throwing a drink. So how could it be misinterpreted that anybody else besides Deborah started it? Exactly. It doesn't not it does not make sense. Then I don't know how come Andy didn't question uh can't, I mean, um, Ashley's comment about is the cameras are the cameras down? That that should that should have been a flat out first question when the fight was even brought up. What was yeah. what was your what was your reasoning for asking that? Hmm. Why did you ask? No, he didn't ask her anything. Why was she, why did you invite her? He didn't. She was able to sit there quietly while they she put sat there with on. her lips perched the whole time and didn't ask, have to answer for anything. She didn't answer for anything. To, um, the first uh part of the reunion, you told us that you was rubbing Michael's feet. Now you make got an announcement that you made a, a a complaint. Girl, shut up. Girl, just shut. It's just it's it's so it's disturbing to me. And like I said in the chat, I have kind of stopped watching. I'll go and like you all's videos just for the support, but I rarely kind of listen to the whole thing in totality because it's infuriating for me to hear people defend this, that this whole flat out, all three of these parts are flat out everybody against two people. And those two people you all telling me just people. happen to be dark? They're the black That's people. not a coincidence. That is absolutely not a coincidence. And mm -hmm. Andy, and I, I just, I, I don't know, it's just pissing me off. Then your whole answer to Wendy not calling you you don't even speak to Wendy. Why would she call you and offer condolences? Right. Why would, why would she call you? That don't even, that does not in the real world. Nobody's gonna call somebody and offer their condolences. I can feel compassion for you in my heart at my own home. I don't have to get on the phone and call your number. You right. call my mother a witch, and then to try to bring some kind of validity to the comment, you tried to say you called Jamal. That was her way of trying to bring validity to the comment about Wendy's mother being a witch because you called Jamal the cheating pastor. And what kind of behavior? It's the no way you could pastor. tell me the whole pastor. It's no way in hell that you could tell me, even though this is a reality show and we know it's not totally real, you cannot tell me this was not your behavior in that church. And you were the prop, you were probably the most disgusting first lady that oh, sat on sure any pit. Like I, I can imagine how you turn um, religious sour for people with that mm -hmm. attitude. It's just mm -hmm. nasty. It's so nasty. And Rob, you, I, I wanted. I'm glad that Candace kept her composure and didn't go hard on them. But I really mm -hmm. wanted her to say something when Rob kept on questioning Chris. You don't even have your husband behind you, sir. You can't ask my husband a damn thing. Mm -hmm. You can't ask my man, my man, my man, nothing. Mm -hmm. Yours ain't even here. Where is he? Mm -hmm. Paying for another room? Mm. <laughs> like, I'm yes. like, girl, you talking about was the screenshots real? That The screenshots wasn't real, but the hotel receipt was, and the receipt for them nails was that he paid for. Hello. <laughs> and the like, lodging that picture. You asking my man anything, and yours don't even like you. Like mm -hmm. it's the audacity for me. Like, and Giselle, you don't have one at all. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's just it's just a mess. They are jealous of those two women, and it is. I think it's it's, it's absolutely got something to do with their color because they think that the things that those two have that they are deserving of it. But if they That's had right. cleaner hearts and better attitudes and better character, they maybe would be able to find the kinds of husbands. The supportive husbands that Wendy and Candace have. And you know what else? Had they worked harder and applied themselves in life instead of thinking that their color was going to get them something, 
they would have had more for themselves without a man. This, that's what I'm saying. They don't have they don't have clean hearts. They didn't work hard. They enough. don't have good character, and they're not good people. Yeah, you and you so, didn't work hard. They and the two of you have nothing going on. Right. She the two of you have so much nothing coasted. going on that we'll be Rob will be in the in the in the tabloids in the news next year, just like Kim Zodiac from losing everything. Because what the two of you, what, what you and Juan got going on? That you man don't have a job. This is how disrespectful. This wait a minute, nothing. This is how this is another thing. This is how disrespectful. This is why Robin shouldn't say anything, and she should be a nicer person because she should want some of that some compassion offered to her. This is how disrespectful your man is. Outside of the things he's done with other women that we know about and we can prove that nobody can debunk because it's a fact. Outside of that, your job is you guys' source of income right now. He does not have a job. It's going to be hard for him to even get a job in that field at all because those because of those allegations. Even though it was thrown out or whatever, you were let go and the allegations will forever linger over your head. No, that, so that line of work. No, uh -uh, no ma'am. That Negro had a a thirty one percent win record. That's why he ain't got no job. That's long. Because he was up there. Listen, it's a movie, baby, called The Last Dragon. Did you ever watch The Last Dragon? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You are the last drink. I used to love it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was my movie. So it was a part in the movie, right? Remember when Bruce Lee Rowe was trying to get the glow? Oh, yeah. We remember when they said he had to master the art of fighting, fighting without fighting, that right, then you get right. to the final level. See, Juan was trying to get to the final level. He was going to master the art of coaching without coaching. And them people, they got rid of him before he could get the glow. That's what happened. He was the last dragon. And if you, yo, yeah. your husband is that disrespectful that he ruins your source of income. He didn't even care. He didn't, he care. didn't care. That's how much he don't yeah. care about you, but you asking about my husband's indiscretion. That's not true. <gasps> that are not true. He didn't even, he could have did the same thing Chris did. Chris answered what he wanted to and shut the rest down. That's the same thing Juan could have came and did. But just because he does not, his disdain for Robin wouldn't even let her help her, wouldn't even let him help her keep a check. Didn't care. Now the kid's going to be taking cold showers again. Now you know what, now that you you know that hurt my feelings when them children got to suffer because they mama, you know, well, let me not say mama. Both of them, the mama and the daddy. The mommy and the pappy. But see, you know what they say, mama's baby dad is maybe. Even if the dad ain't no good, as a woman, you supposed to look out for the best interest of your children. If that mean getting rid of the daddy, getting them a new daddy, if that mean getting 10 jobs, if that mean do carrying them on top of your head. Exactly. Okay? They got a sorry mammy. And I feel bad because those some cute little boys. The minute Juan the minute told me he wasn't coming to the reunion, he would have been packing his stuff. I would have never been with Juan in the first Let place. Let me tell you something. I know that's right. I know that's right. Wouldn't I never don't be need, like, but would never be with him. Like, that man is not supportive. He is not loving. He is not caring. He is not attentive. He is not any of the things a partner is supposed to be, so he would never be my partner. But mm -hmm. the, the final straw is it. I would have looked at it as that in NIGGA, you taking food out of my mouth. Look here, and my sister. You taking money out of my said, pocket. My sister on the phone said, you know, sometimes she be sending y'all messages. She say, you right. They didn't work hard enough. Keep up your figure. Keep your looks. Get a little business. Carry yourself well. Decorate well. Shower. Take baths. They thought green eyes would take them to the promised land. But I heard faith without works is dead. Girl, you better preach. <laughs> That's real, though. <laughs> That's real, Nisha. You can't say that ain't real. That's real. That's real. But see, I said but you, that they didn't work hard enough in life. They thought but that because nothing, nothing that because, she nothing that she ever can do for somebody that don't want her won't work. But no, but this is what I'm trying to say, baby. Both of her, her and uh, her and uh, flotation, the one with them swollen legs. Oh, oh, I oh, oh, oh. Name. What's it, oh, say her name? What's her name? So fight. Glizzard. Both of them. Now, the problem is they uh, thought I get a little bachelor's, that's enough. I ain't got to do nothing else. I don't have to apply myself. I don't have to be a businesswoman. 
I don't have to have no hustle. I, I'm yellow. I'm yellow in black spaces. I'm non-black in black spaces, and that's gonna put that's gonna put me above actual black women. And I will have my pick of the litter of successful black men, and I am gonna be a okay. That's mm -hmm. what they thought. So because you didn't apply yourself, because that's why I said last year, probably the year before, and I'm probably gonna say it again before I die colorism affects everybody who participates in that sick system okay absolutely it not only victimizes and disenfranchises our darker sisters but those people who are not even sisters who want to participate it victimizes them too by participating reasons being it gives them a false sense of security and it allows them to lean on a fallacy they really believed that that was going to happen for them. And so they were victimized by the same system because you believed in that system, because you participated in it, you did not prepare yourself. You did not learn any class. You have no allocution. You have no polish. You that have no intelligence. Them. You have no culture. You are, un, you are an uncultured, uncouth, unwashed heathen. You, you barely raised your children decent, barely. You don't even know how to put yourself together. Your home looks like Pee Wee's Playhouse. Robert is over there, still and never learned any interpersonal skills. Thank you, delightful. No social skills. Never learned any oh. social graces. Did not learn how to have interpersonal relationships with black women who can assist her, which is why her weave always looked like 25 birds pecked through it and picked at it and built a nest on her god darn head. These have was never, supposed to be her background? never built any meaningful businesses, did not build business relationships, did not learn how to network. You truly screwed yourself because you believe that colorism would take you, as my sister said, to the promised land. You thought you were going to Nirvana because of because of your recessive genes and lack of melanocytes. How many the fact that you got the fact that you got dog eyes and every time your temperature <laughs> change, we can see My your skin eyes. color fluctuate. That was not going to get you where you needed to go. How many, can, how many seasons has this show been on? Eight. Can I say, can I say something? Seasons, Robin has nothing to show for over a couple of million dollars that she's earned and neither does Giselle. But she didn't even keep them. She, because Wait, she had I, to live on a but this my whole that that's she my was living point. paycheck to paycheck. But that's my whole point, Nisha. They did not prepare themselves in life because they were depending on color. Had they prepared themselves, had they made themselves more intelligent, had they ready themselves for their lives, when money hits your hand and you're intelligent, then you would know what to do with the money. You would know how to invest your money. You would, have more built, with less. you would have built business relationships so that you could say, hey, friend, you got a lot going on over there. Help me invest in some property. I want to put some money in an offshore account. Show me how to do your thing. Hey, friend, mm -hmm. oh, you know somebody with a hedge fund. Let me get in on that. But you can't do that when you have developed none of the social skills that you need to survive. They mm -hmm. didn't even have friend that they could call and say hey friend i want to trade commodities help a girl out i know you got an i, I know you got a commodities account help me out i want to invest in wheat and gold and silver and stuff like you know help me out nothing nothing Damn. After nothing. some hat some hat wasn't even, even smart enough to say hey i want to let me go ahead and get an, a license to sell insurance and i'm going to take maybe two hundred thousand dollars and buy a couple of people's book of businesses for insurance and then i already have a client list and i can just service them and that's a residual income like nothing intelligent comes out of these whores and that's what's saying nothing re what you got all you did was do get hat all you did was make bedazzle hat well i mean honestly honestly we should have just taken um juan's approach regarding robin i mean from season one he told us that he was looking for the love of his life right there in her face. So we should, so I don't understand why we feeding into the slide that they're married. Like that man don't like her. That man don't want her. That man is sending us like, he's sending us 
smoke signals. He's sending us codes telling her she telling the audience she ain't shit. I don't know how many different ways can he tell us that Robin ain't it. And everybody talks about colorism, yes, but you also see how Giselle, like it, it, it's weird with Giselle. Like, like it, it it's weird because of the fact that she surrounds herself with women that she feels she's above. Look at Robin. Robin ain't got nothing going on for her. Look at Mia. Mia destroyed her marriage. But she's angry and mad at Wendy and Candace because Wendy and Candace has what she doesn't have. They have great careers. They have great marriages. They have good husbands. They got good families. You know? And I'm sorry, but she's a shit stain on her on her father's legacy. Like, you doing all of this. I'm sorry for swearing. You're doing all Girl, of this. Is you. I'm just enjoying you what you're saying. Go ahead. You're doing all of this is bringing up all is pretty much opening up the doors for all his skeletons. She needs to watch out before the alphabet com community comes after her because didn't, do you remember your last show? Somebody from Texas said that he, he clearly stated that she wasn't one of us yeah. because of the fact that she was a lesbian. Everybody in, in Texas knew she was a lesbian. So she needs to watch out with what she's doing because all of a sudden the alphabet community is going to be like, oh, well, your father was against black lesbians. So she is really walking a very thin line. And like I always said, Giselle is head is so stuck in the cloud. They fired Nini. They fired a lot of the OGs that started franchises for different franchises. What makes you think they're not going to get rid of you? Mm -hmm. Like, well, and actually, actually, no. You got you. I'm gonna say no. She has the she has the complexion for the connection. Hold on, so hold, hold on, Nisha. Hold on, baby. We got to amend that statement. They did not file Lanethia. What they did was try to do to her what they're doing to these ladies, which is actively use production to give the villain edit. When Lanethia did not want to participate with it and started walking out on scenes and not not going along with the villain edits and not giving them sound bites so that they could splice it and cut it however they wanted to. Then they said, well, we're going to lower the amount of, we're going to lower the amount of episodes because that way we don't have to pay you because she had their most favorite nations contract. So they couldn't change the amount per episode, but they were able to wiggle it and drop the amount of episodes. And so when they wanted to screw with her money, she said, no, that's what happened. So what we're looking at is two exactly identical almost situations. But one person said, you're not going to keep doing this to me. Candace kept letting them play with her and give her try to give her a villain edit and splice and cut and chop and screw. Nene said, absolutely not. Walking off sets, walking out of scenes. That's why they set up that thing to walk in the closet for her to tell the cameraman, come up out my closet. And then Portia helped them lie on her. Y'all know how it went. Yeah. And Candace, Candace didn't even buck the stick up. Her <laughs> nor Wendy. They sat up there and let the people keep playing with them, kept filming them, kept giving them nasty edits. So we saw two different things. And then when it comes to Giselle, they're not doing that to her because she's still doing their dirty work. She's doing to the black women what they know that no purely Caucasian cast member could ever get away with. But let me ask you a question. Cast member who's not claiming blackness, even when they're not. And um, went real quick, baby, and I'm going to get back to you. Okay. Real quick. Okay? I just need to dress up in the chat. Come again. You want to explain this? What does Candace's bloodline have to do with her being attacked by non-black women? If you don't mind explaining that, because I was wondering. Go ahead, sugar. Oh, so I was also going to say, like, he takes Wendy and Candace on promotional tours. Didn't he bring them on um, Live with Kelly and... um? Mark Consuelo, I didn't see him bring. I don't know about um, no Mark Consuelo. I seen him on Kelly Clarkson. I seen him on there. Ke yeah, he Kelly was like, oh, I love to call it intelligent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you don't he love brought. Intelligent. Yeah, so you can bring them on to do promotions for the show, but you can't bring on Giselle and Robin to do the promotion for the show. So obviously, the general audience do like Wendy and Candace better, and they are. Like people always say, Giselle's the face of the show. 
but really they're more candace and wendy are more relatable and more likable well the thing is he knows that the that uh, andy went andy went out and paraded them in front of the public on that show to get ahead of what was about to be what was about to be viewed that's, that's all that way. was he but was i want to tell you i want to i want to look at it from another angle too Andy and the rest of those executives, they know. I can't that hear. Y'all can't hear me? I can hear you. I can okay, hear you. I can't hear. Oh, no. Check your Are you on your phone? Uh -huh. Nisha, you on your phone? You said what? Are you on your phone? Are you on your phone? Yes. yes. Turn your media volume up. Hold on. The volume. Go to media and turn your media volume up. Because sometimes if okay. you're on your phone, the media volume will be down. Turn the media volume up. But um, I think that he knows that the, the crowd, the audience, loves Candace and Wendy. I think that's also why they're working so hard to try to... They want to flip public sentiment. They want to be able to change public sentiment. Does that make sense? That's why yeah, they're trying to do the edits. That's why they're trying to do, you know, the narratives. Like, let's change the narrative because right now the narrative is that the public love the black ladies. So let's change the narrative. We've already had the public fall in love with the black acting black lady that they identify before. We don't like that. The public likes the black lady. So the black lady. So I'm going to go out with them and pretend like, yeah, I like them too. See, I'm just like y'all. I like them too. But in essence, they they worked overtime. They, we we watched them work overtime to try to change public sentiment against the black ladies. They want to change. That. They know it's true, but they want to change. Well, I'm gonna drop off. I have to finish cleaning. <laughs> so no! you just got here. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and keep listening. But I'm gonna go ahead and drop off. I have to do some cleaning. So, but I mean, to be honest with you, I don't even think I'm going to watch the next season because I'm just so disgusted with everything that's going on. It is it's very disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. And I don't blame anybody um, for not watching. I know, like I said, a lot of a, a lot of ladies are not watching now. They come online to get reviews to find out what happened, whether the ladies are being treated fairly or not or what's taking place. And maybe to get a few laughs, but you know, it's traumatic and it's harmful to watch <laughs> these type of things play out. Like it's really damaging to your psyche. Hey, I'm that girl. Thank you for being 215. And I think the other thing, you know, with us being online, I think a lot of times the ladies who do not watch the show then come online to get reviews only to end up being traumatized anyway. Because we have content creators that will go live, defend colorist behavior, defend anti-black sentiment, defend anti-black woman sentiment, and then tell you, oh, you're just jealous of these people. That's why you have a problem with them doing character assassinations. You're jealous of them. That's why you you can see the double standard. That's why you can see the hypocrisy. So it's, it's really disturbing to me that black women are like literally the whipping boy for everybody. Like that bothers me. It really does. That is one of the few things that has kept me doing the review and sitting through. Yes, Anne Marie, minimize. Yes. Um, and and making sure that I do reviews that I feel like are socially responsible. Because it's irresponsible to tell black women that if you see something that is against you, that's that's vile, that offends you. If you speak on it, it's clearly because you're jealous of the person who's trying to abuse you and people who look like you. And Marie say the reality is the network is trying to appeal to white people. Amen. Colorism, racism, and anything socially conscious is what they want to minimize. Very and I okay. still can't believe they victimized Candace after being attacked by that that wildebeest. I don't understand that. Like she went there with an agenda. I I I was my full like I swear to you, Ashley set that up. She, she set did. up Candace to get jump. And I mean and honestly, Giselle and Robert and Mia knew all about it. And honestly, if I were on the other shows, I would be worried too because as you stated, 
that means that other cast members can do the same thing. I mean, remember in uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey, wasn't he using like outside people to do like crazy stuff to some of the cast members because he saw people in other the other shows doing it. So you telling me now it's gonna be like, oh, okay, well if we don't like this person, then we're gonna go ahead and bring people out, people that don't like them to jump them. Yeah, like they're like, they're really gonna just turn it into the Zeus Network. It's gonna be Zeus. That's exactly where it's headed. It's headed in that direction. But it's really, it's this show. It's just like it's just I don't know. It's it's just uh, it's just disgusting oh. to me. Yeah, it, I really want just, Wendy to leave too, but I don't want them to think they made her that they got her off. No, no, Wendy I, needs to needs to leave to save her brand that's what she needs to do because wendy's too classy for that show she like those women are all gutter rats that's what they, they are. are they are they are gutter snipes that's what they are they are nasty they are heartless they are evil they are everything that every word you can think of that's that's not nice that's what they are and i thought about it too robin and Giselle is so close, and that's her uh, Ace Boon Coon, and that's her ride or die. She might as well just you, become her, her girlfriend. That's it. No, they said no. It's the um, it's the power dynamic. Just Giselle has a thing that she wants to be the HBIC, and Robin has a humiliation kink, so she's going to be loyal to people who are who don't treat her right. She has mm -hmm. uh, maybe she has abandonment issues or something like that, but she is the person that's on the always going to be on the receiving end of the bad treatment. So mm -hmm. they, 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 they their dynamic works because it's the boss and the flunky, and they play both. They play both of those positions. But if this your friend so much and she knows that uh, you and your family are in a bad way right now because your husband is not working and I don't see any profitable uh, income for him in the near future, why didn't she decide to start a business with you? Mm. Girl, she ain't gonna do it. But oh, talking about Robin. It's yeah. not gonna surprise me. They're she gonna start um, a business with Ashley. Come on now, you got your best friend sitting right next to you. Why didn't you start a business with her? Cause she know them people was finna get rid of her. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> no, she knows that Robin's broker than her. Nah, -uh, not even that. She know that, but she know them people was about to get rid of Robert. They mm. let her stay for another season, and she still ducked and dodged, and was you know in the matrix when it came to um one. They didn't, she didn't give them no show. She, but she gave Chris all that smoke. Mm. Candace knows where her husband is. Shoot, Robin needs to worry because of the fact that she might be right there at the reunion and Juan might be with his little Canadian flunky. Watching the reunion. Ain't that the, the, the culture girl named Bree? He was, that's where he at. I don't know if he's still, you know, men, sometimes men be funny when they get caught with somebody, they switch to somebody else. That's usually now. Sometimes it, if he likes her a lot, he'll stick with her. That's what I was about to say. Unless they, that's what I was about to say. Unless they really, that's what I was about to say. Unless they really, really, really like the one they get caught with, they'll switch up. So if you catch them, they switch. And Canada, Canada told on him, so he ain't going back that way no more. And you know she told because he tried to bring his friend to let his friend hunch too. So I guess right. she say, listen. I brought this cat down from Canada to let you play with it, not your friend. Exactly. Yeah, she was hot. She was offended. That's why she told. She was offended by because she came. Because he tried to, to bring his friend to come play. Yeah, with exactly. Him. She came in town to meet you, not your friend. So now I'm gonna put you on blast. I don't so blame, blame her though. I don't blame her because you flew her out to get you know for her to play with you. You ain't even give. I don't even believe you gave that girl enough money for her to play with you and your friend. What is that? <laughs> he don't have the money to do that. He don't have the money to do that. He don't even have the money to be with one outside of the booty wet. <laughs> for real, for real. That's a, a cheat and it's a rich man's game. Mm. And he ain't rich. He ain't he ain't middle class. Girl, mm. he ain't he ain't even lower middle class. Mm. She had me cracking up talking about, well, she doesn't look good. Like men, she with anything that got a hole. Then that did uh, somebody else. Girl, I don't know if it was Juice Anitra that said it, or somebody else, or maybe on another podcast I was watching it. I they brought up a good point. Every time, every every scene that we saw Juan in this season, to, in to, in totality, he always looked like he was stopping by. He was never in lounge clothes. He was never chilling. He always looked like he just breezing through the house. 
hoodie on, jacket, coat, shoes. He never looked like that was his home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I pointed out before, I don't believe that man was staying there. Because that season when he told everybody, when he told everybody that she was laying up in that bed and not washing her tail, every time they showed that bed, that whole other side of that bed would be crooked and made up. And neat. It wasn't even a dent on it. That man ain't never sit on it. And every time they showed him, he was talking to her from the from the, the door jam, from the, the threshold. The, the, the interest way. He never walked in nowhere near. So mm -hmm. I believe if he's staying there now, it's only because he ain't got no money to stay nowhere else. I could see her. I could see her having a little twinge smell, a little tangy smell to her. She looked like yeah, she, she looked look frowsy. She looked yeah, frowsy. She, yeah, she, she looked she look look frowsy. Like yeah, she looked like she don't practice the best of hygiene, so I could see that. Mm -hmm. She barely even comb her hair. Well, I can't say nothing about that because I don't like to comb my hair either. That's one time I can't talk about them. I got plaques in my head right this minute because I don't want to comb no hair, so I can't talk about it. Well, I guess I'm gonna be watching the reviews online. So, and that, you, you notice, like, I'm wondering, if, I'm wondering what the whole of Giselle's family looks like. Because she won't show them. We didn't know she had a sister until just now. So I'm wondering, is are they of a different hue? Are they are any hue? Uh, maybe her sister just doesn't. Maybe her sister just doesn't like her. Could possibly. That's why. That's very, very much a possibility. But I'm wondering, are they of every hue? And that's why she won't show them. I don't. I don't know about that now. I don't know about that. I seriously doubt it. Mm -mm, her sister's like, uh -uh, think, you would not bring that mess to me. I think it may be something wrong in that relationship, but I don't think that they no different color because the daddy is his color and the mama, you know, super duper clear. So, but you, but you know, we are we we are unicorns. We come out any color. Who is we? Them people ain't black. Who is we? But they well, you know, they could that anything can be going no. on over there. No, mm -hmm. uh. -uh. Nothing no, from I nothing, think, nothing. <laughs> no, I think her sister, her sister just doesn't want to be affiliated with the any type of shit storm that's gonna happen. I mean, Hello. that's <laughs> why because I mean, honestly, like I have a sister. I know my how my sister is, and if my sister was on that show, I'd be like, uh, uh, I don't know you, you don't know me. Just because we have the same last name, don't mean that we got any type of relationship. Go on Google and delete any picture that looks of me and you together. <laughs> yep, get it all up out of there quickly. <laughs> quickly. Get, move that right quick. A say, Nitra, will you be watching season nine? I see zero reason to watch now. Mia is a stunt queen. No one else will be transparent. N um, necktie is all right, and Wendy will basically try, they will basically try to ice out. We, we already know they're gonna, gonna I hope they don't bring that necktie hole back, baby. And the answer, they, hold on. And the answer to the question. It depends. It still remains to be seen. I cannot say with 100% accuracy that I will or I won't right now. So I don't want to answer that and then, it, you know, make myself out a liar. Um, it just depends on a lot of things. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, if I feel like we need to have social commentary about what's happening as it pertains to actual Black people, then yes, I would. Because we do not have responsible um, content creators, for the most part, who will be responsible, who will actually say when things are wrong as it pertains to Black women, who will not sit on platforms and gaslight Black women and insult Black women for pointing out things that they find offensive and triggering. In that case, yes, I would. But if it's just going to be, you know, a clear and clear adjacent and cloudy fest, then absolutely not because then I don't have a reason to at that point I may as well be watching below deck like I don't watch things that don't pertain to me which is why usually usually every now and then like people like New Jersey because they're so ignorant it's actually entertaining um then yeah I watch stuff like that but these ladies um without the the need for social commentary they're not entertaining at all so if there's no actual black women on the show and it's no entertainment value and I don't need to be here to kind of be a wall for my sisters because I feel like that's my purpose, okay? It's to be that wall and to say that this is inappropriate and to point out the gaslighting and the gaslighting techniques that are being used against Black women, then I don't, you know, I wouldn't have a reason. You know, if that's fair. 
Yeah, but I'm just saying. So, in my opinion, they've been boring the whole season, honestly. Um, but I felt like I needed to be doing what I was doing because not only because of the way that these people at NBC and Bravo are treating the black ladies on the show, but also because of the way the black women in the viewing audience are being treated on social media by content creators for pointing out things that are offensive and triggering. Okay. So once there's no black women there and I don't need to be that wall, if they want to just sit up and have a clear and cloudy fest and be boring together and ruminate in their bad hygiene together, I don't really care. You know, then I probably won't. Hey, Cheryl. But what you was about to say, Ree? Ree, I thought she was about to say something. I was trying to. Oh, I'm something. sorry. I was. I'm sorry. I was gonna say. Um, I'm just waiting for next season. Oh, well, no, I shouldn't say I'm waiting for next season. It wouldn't surprise me next season that they attack NECA because of the comment that she made um to her husband. For her, for him to go where Juan is, wherever he at, <laughs> yeah, wherever he at. But I also find her a whole weirdo. She has a magazine that she had them do a whole editorial on her, and I'm just like, wait, aren't you supposed to be doing editorial on other people and not on yourself to make it seem like, like she made it seem like the magazine actually reached out to her to do the editorial, but she owns it. So I, I, I don't know. I'm just confused. But she's a cornball. She's a weirdo. She sat up there and accused that lady of ostracizing her. Well, no, I'm sorry. On social media, she said ostrich sizing. So I don't know. Maybe it was the stretching of her neck that she meant. I'm not sure. But literally everybody talks to you. So how can one person ostrich size you? Like the, Wendy literally paid you dust. What did she do to you but ignore you? So basically it's giving, I'm angry with Wendy because you didn't give me a hookup. And I'm angry with Wendy because you wouldn't give me a moment. Like you literally looked at me like I smelled and stayed away from me. Like there was nothing else that Wendy did to her at all. Oh, and it's everybody weird. that and everybody that talks about um Wendy's mom color uh coloring, bleaching her skin, NECA bleaches too. Cause her because if you look the whole body, they like. It goes from like it goes about 10, 12 shades. And I'm just like, I'm black, but I don't I don't go 10, 12 shades like that from head to toe. Okay. But ain't nobody talking about that. Okay. Hey too feisty. Hello. Too feisty. Now how you come up and get on the mute button and don't talk to me? I'm sorry, right when you let me up, I had a call come through. I apologize. Oh, okay. I'm like, How what's this? Tonight? What's up this afternoon? We good? How you? I'm sorry. I had a call. I'm I'm fine. You know what? I'm not going to lie. And thank you for letting me up. Um, I said earlier that RHOP is a hostile work environment. And mm -hmm. it really, I think one of the reasons why a lot of us get so upset, it really is and i think for, for a lot of us it reminds us of you know we've all had at least that one job that we couldn't stand we hated going to every day we dreaded the weekend ending and having to go back to work and i can just imagine that that's the way it is for candace and it's even worse when it's our supposedly our own kind that's making it such such a tough, tough environment even at that reunion we watched the entire season of everybody else's wrongdoings, yet the entire reunion was about Candace and she didn't have first seat. Mia was just there to offer like side commentary for the most part. I barely talked about the situation with her and Gordon. Um, I'm genuinely glad as somebody who's always been like quote unquote team Candace since you know she first joined the show, I'm genuinely glad that she's leaving because whether I like you or don't like you, it's not comfortable to watch someone be gaslit. She's literally being gaslit. And it's worse because the way they are chopping is growing. I, I don't know if everybody's watching the extended Peacock version of the, the episodes, but um, she's literally being gaslit. And that is the reason why it, it's, a, it's a boiling pot. It's, it's a pressure point. 
that's why she's so emotional because it's like it's either gonna come out in tears it's gonna come out in cussing or it's gonna come out in violence and god knows if i do the other two they'll make a big issue out of it it's it's gonna have to release that so that steam is gonna have to come out at some point when it's built up in you she's being gaslit by her cast members she's being gaslit by production she's being gaslit by the host and it makes it even worse the fact that Giselle all but confirmed that she was given a talking to. So I'm supposed to be here and not defend myself. And if I do defend myself, I have to do it with both my hands tied behind my back while everybody can throw knives, daggers, whatever at me. That's the, just just cancel the show. <laughs> I agree. I would offer y'all some, but you know y'all over there. <laughs> but I agree. I totally agree. I will say this, that comment from Giselle, I was told she would be given a talking to. Mm -hmm. That was, I, I heard y'all was going to put her in her place and make her quit calling out what I'm doing. That's all I heard. It's, it's definitely what they, what they say. I mean, and then like I said, just as somebody, you can always tell the people who all always watch this show and the people watching this show, because a lot of the folks came over during season five, but like just to go back, the whole weaponizing her children. This lady has been weaponizing her children against that cast. When she when she was talking about Candace's home and her her financial arrangement with her mother, shout out to generational wealth, and Candace clapped back on Twitter, calling her house a tear down. You're gonna talk about the home that I had bought for my children, for me and my children. What your kids got to do with this? You made a comment about my living situation. I made a comment and about the funeral home parlor you live in. We ain't talking about the girls. The girls ain't got nothing to do with this. But she can throw that out there. And then it's once again going to villainize Candace. Well, you did talk about her house. And it's like, and unfortunately, people instinctively, because, you know, shout out to the system that we live in. They instinctively, when a lighter skinned woman says, hey, I'm being victimized, we don't evaluate what's being said, what's being done. We just kind of instinctively say, Giselle barely mustered out a tear about her father's death and we all felt so for what for what i say we all because i ain't felt nothing for that man <laughs> I, I i i just recently lost my mother so i sympathize with anybody who has lost a parent just because i'm literally experiencing grief it's been two months my mother's birthday is next friday and i don't even know how i'm gonna handle that i but, understand my mama's birthday was april 4th and she left me May 10th, 2022. I, I don't I don't even know how to come. Honestly, baby, I don't have a mama or a daddy. Both of mine gone. Both of them. Daddy in 2013 and mama in 2022. And I ain't feel a gap during thing for that heifer. But that's her fault that we didn't feel anything. And I'm going to tell you specifically why. Even when they were trying to get her in their confessional to talk about her relationship with her father. Let's talk about that later. It's not our fault that we can't emotionally connect to you losing a parent. And the one person who was trying to, despite how awful you've been to her, you tried to demonize her for that much. It, Giselle literally has offered no. We didn't learn that her father was in the hospital sick and dying of, of brain cancer from her. We learned that from Robin and Mia. And they mm -hmm. even tried to villainize them for that. Because, you know, our favorite thing to do over here in this franchise is to start in the middle. Oh, well, she she compared it to uh, when her mama was in the hospital. No, 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 no. That's not how that happened. And production, if you go back and watch the original episode and go back to the reunion clip, production intentionally cut a big chunk out of that scene. When Mia mm -hmm. said that her father's in the hospital, Candace said, you know, despite how I feel about her, I can sympathize with her and wish her and her family well. I'm just going to do it from a distance. Now, Candace, now why would you do that? Why wouldn't you go and reach out to her and just make sure she's okay? And that is when Wendy responded, when nobody reached out to me when my mom was in the hospital. We're not saying that we are happy her father's in the hospital. We just we're not saying that he just we're saying that we are going to wish you well, but we ain't about to why would I go and reach out to someone who dehumanizes me at every chance they get and won't even acknowledge me when we're in the same room, even when she's invited to my event. You won't even say hello in response to me, yet somehow I am expected to drop what I'm doing and run to ensure that you are okay. <laughs> Why does that make me a bad person? Because I'm choosing not to. Girl, that's Miss Millie. You don't want to be Miss Millie made. 
it, it's it's always in the middle. It's never at the beginning and how we got here. Even down to this whole fight situation, they are going to start in the middle. They're starting when Candace picked up that bottle. We're not going to talk about that. I've actually obviously set her up. We're not going to talk about the fact that, I, you know what? I'm going to give it to her. I don't think Giselle had no involvement in setting her up. Maybe she I knew think about she it. Knew. I yeah, think she I don't think I, I never said I think she was knew. involved, but I say that whole new and so yeah. did Robert. So if Robert knew, Giselle knew, Robert knew enough for her to be and they all convened. Oh no, Robert knew enough for her to be. Um, I, I was leaving, I hadn't left yet. I was in the hallway mm -hmm. behind production. She knew to do that. Ashley knew to say, Are the cameras down? Are, are Go ahead, the forgot to ask if the mics are, are done? Are we wrapped? Are we? Forehead yeah, forgot to ask the mics was off. To jump in, <laughs> yeah, she yeah she forgot that part, but she asked that, that camera was down, and <laughs> Mia knew enough. After um Mushu got pap papped upside the head to run over there, you got too much to lose. Why are you calming her down like she was the one to take? See, they was all and in on this. They just, the problem is they forgot to tell Mongoose about it because because while she is a boot licker, they really don't like you, girl. Mm -mm. And this is how you know you sit high she didn't know because that. typically they will take the mics off and stuff so that the mic don't catch them talking about different things and having a good time and stuff. But Ashley was chomping at the bits to get Candace that she forgot to wait for the mic packs to get taken and confiscated she and for production to leave the room. And and she also didn't count on somebody having enough time to whip out their, their phone and record the whole situation. And I'm not going to hold you. I think the video going around on the internet Mm -hmm. is a friend of Ashley. I think it's a friend of Ashley and I think they recorded it and sold that clip um, for, for a couple dollars. But I'm going to tell you why I think it's a friend of Ashley because from a distance you would not know that that, was, that situation was going to end up in a fight without prior knowledge because it just looks as if for me people who are familiar with each other are speaking to one another it's a crowded nightclub the music is loud you can't hear that it's a contentious conversation from a distance but somehow that video starts right when she pours the drink on her who knows ahead of time unless they knew what they were getting ready to talk about so i think it was somebody from ashley's crew I didn't never think of that, that recorded that video mm -hmm. because like i said just think about how the whole thing played out so the, the girls on the show are over there dancing hanging out and stuff and then she walks over and she was like you know uh do you have something you want to say to me that doesn't indicate a fight is getting ready to happen but that video conveniently starts from when candace is responding and then she picks up her drink and you know tries to pour it on her who who would know to pull out their phone to record it like a fight? Like typically, people pull out their phone when they see two people loudly arguing because they like. Oh, and this it wasn't might end up like that. Candace was a you right. Candace was over there like trying not to pay her no mind. Yeah, she so even turned around. It speaking. escalated. It escalated really quickly, and I'm saying only somebody with prior knowledge would have known. But see, that's why I say he said how he look low because. I think they sold that video to TMZ to make a couple of dollars, not realizing that it was going to squash Mess the plan the that they plan. had. Because they never, it's, they never, two factors they never counted on somebody recording from a distance, and the other factor was the mic still being on. And when we put the two together, we was able to piece because remember the whole narrative the entire time since that fight first easy. happened. The, the narrative was Candace started that fight. Candace was responsible for that fight, but the audio and the video together proves that that wasn't her fault. Mm. And the audio definitely made Ashley complicit because prior to Ashley, Ashley went into full actress. What happened? Like you weren't right there in the middle of everything going on. What are you asking what happened? You was right there. You was literally standing next to your friend. How, what, what are you asking questions for? You literally saw the entire thing play out. Mm. And you know what else? Now you got me thinking. And so they had planned it out how they was going to make it be at, um, Candace's fault and Candace's wrong. Candace grabbed the bottle, blah, blah, blah. We heard about Candace and his bottle way before the season even um, came. And yes. then they had Big Reese, her and her wig to go confront Candace about the bottle to make it back the bottle and pretending like she took the bottle because at that point, Ashley didn't know that her friend had recorded it, and we saw Ashley was the one that took the bottle out of Candy's hand. 
and between the confessional between the confessional and the scene that they recorded at that uh that the premiere of the uh revealing of those pictures and stuff that they took they were operating like there was no video proof of what took place they so that's how she it. was talking the way she was talking not realizing that we was going to actually see what happened your friend walked over and you were standing right next to her why are you pretending like you don't know what happened oh it was definitely a setup mm -hmm. mm. girl you don't make me grab my cracker i didn't even think that that could have been a friend that was recording trying to get a quick coin because how else would you know to record the only way most people only catch it mid mid fight or with two people loudly arguing but if you watch the audio, if you watch the video the video has no audio if you watch it from a distance you don't know that's going to end up being a fight it happens so quickly wow mm. i never thought of that because y'all know i love a fight video y'all know me for love i'm from ocala I'm, I'm a florida girl i love a fight video. okay i'm from the, okay i'm from the mug hello so i'm looking at the fight video i'm excited but i never thought about the fact what would make you start recording because i record fight video and i record good fight videos i don't be shaking my camera my phone nothing i get all the action okay but i never thought about it how was this person able to catch it start to finish when it wasn't no rah rah to even hype up to let you know a fight was coming the, mm -hmm. it literally started right when candace was like no i have nothing to say to you and then she turned around you wouldn't think that's going to be a fight yeah i think but i think one of her friends slipped up and sold the video to make a couple of dollars and the messed around and threw ashley into the mix because before it. then she was oh. fully ready for to pretend like she was busy organizing the party this that and the third she had already had her lie lined up and it was like no girl you was right there <laughs> You were right there. What, what's the confusion? You saw it from start to end. You were literally standing right next to your friend. She walked. That's why I said, and I tweeted this earlier. I enjoy Karen. I find Karen entertaining. Her and her mole. However, I like her for the most part, but I ain't like. I do did. not. I do not omit Karen from the colorism conversation on any aspect because. What you meant when you said that Wendy doesn't fit the aesthetic of the group? And this, once again, is why I don't omit you from the conversation, despite the fact that you aren't as raging with it as the other two, as the other three, because you were there, you saw what happened. Not only that, but by the time y'all filmed this reunion, you guys have gotten a preview of the upcoming episodes. They're playing clips of what happened. You know exactly what happened. The video has been flown around on the internet for like six, seven months at the, by the time that you guys feel the reunion why are you asking candace why she was calling her vermin you, you saw why she was calling the vermin why didn't you turn around and actually say well ashley you told us that you didn't know what happened but you were standing right there why, why would you walk your friend over there but this is why mm. i never i never give karen credit because again you asking the wrong person the question you walk your friend over there okay the question shouldn't be why Candace was responding to her. The question should have been, why did you bring her over there in the first place? Yet. Because you know your friend don't like Candace after Candace read her down last year. The girl made a bunch of threats and stuff on social media. And you knew that Candace wasn't featuring her either because she lied on Chris. Mm-hmm. All that what you said is true. Oh, don't even get me started on Eric Fuller. Don't get me started mm -hmm. on air fully. It is what it is with him. I love to remind the people that he was the EP on Basketball Wise during that season where OG put her hands on nobody. And yet somehow well, she was aggressive and dangerous. And we, yeah, and, that, and then she had to feel the reunion from a separate room. We have a pattern of behavior here when it comes to him. And they are absolutely like, the whole thing is like, okay, well, well, how does it, how is it colors? They're creating a system on this show. They're creating a system in which there's a privilege that exists and there's also demonizing and the villainization that exists if you are of a darker hue you get a terrible edit you don't get a chance to fully explain yourself nor do you get an opportunity to get your just due you don't get it because there's always going to be protection for people who are even like let's go back the whole speaker incident Y'all are playing this clip over and over again of Candace on IG. And I was in that live that day when she went live. 
I was in that live. But she, Robin she was, shut it off like one nanosecond before she said, but I support Robin. I love Robin. And production she assisted her with that. Production so assisted he, with that. Mm-hmm. And you and, and again, you knew. I mean, Robin knew this though. You knew for a fact that she was not talking about you. It was clear that she was referring to Giselle and Ashley. She was never talking about Robin. But we're not gonna pretend like Robin didn't know. That's that. why she you, didn't play the rest of it because she knew it wasn't about her. She knew it wasn't about her, but that was a lick. That was a that, that was her lick back because when Candy showed up, she didn't take their side against Wendy. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, I genuinely am looking forward. If I'm watching, I'm genuinely looking forward to what they're going to do because 75 to 95 percent of this show, depending on which season we're talking about, has been about Candace. This entire oh, union yeah. has been about Candace. Even when Candace is saying nothing, they're zooming in on her face to see what her facial yeah. reactions are going to be. If she's crying, like everybody on that stage was crying. Just they was talking about her daddy. We made it a point to talk about Candace, so <laughs> yeah, crying. it's all about like, Candace. What are they going to do? Who are they going to talk about now? And don't get me wrong. We know they're going to come out the NECA. I heard that NECA might get a second season because she's big. The producers love They might They season. might bring that garbage back for another season, but she is garbage. I don't she, think they can fire Wendy because of the colorism accusations. It'll solidify. It, it's, it'll be too much controversy if they get rid of Wendy. Lose Wendy and Candace in the second season. So I think if Wendy wants to come back, she has a spot. Um, but there's only but so much everybody else is going to give you. Again, as somebody who watched this show, hater or lover, as somebody who watched this show from season with the front of pilot episode, Candace mm -hmm. brought a new level of viewership to this show. And I'm she not even is. saying this because she was a fave, but because. But here's the thing. Here's the problem I got with it. The problem I have with it is, and like I said, I've been open. I, I have not always liked Candace. I ain't start off liking Candace. You know all the calls like now. Nobody rang my phone. <laughs> Everybody want to call while we talking. Everybody wants to call me now that I'm up here. But this the I thing. Didn't, didn't get I, was, all day I was not always a Candace fan. I was not. Mm -hmm. um, I was a Dot fan. Now, I've always been a fan of her mama. Now, in, a, in recent years, I've gotten the way I like Candace because Candace grew up a little bit. You know, I don't mm -hmm. really like little piss tail gals. And she was giving me little piss tail gal real hard because she wasn't listening to her mama. You know, I'm a mother. Maybe that's why I don't like little girls that's, you know, do, doing too much. I never had a problem with how she dealt with the other people on the cast. I didn't like how she was handling Dot. Now, that's what I ain't like. But now that she shook it up. Huh? She shook it up on this show. And she, I'm she did, always giving her credit for that. She brought a lot to the show. She has a, a good fan base, a lot of viewership. And so without her, it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be floundering. Coming, I'm well, still trying to find my hold on, hold on, baby. I'm trying to find my light skin pretty. When I get it, I want all my pay, my back pay. Now let me help you out and come again. You know I like you, but I'm about to help you. I'm about to bless your game. Okay, this is another form of that gaslighting that people like to do to black women, and I'm not interested in it. I'm gonna tell you that flat out. See whether you acknowledge that privilege or not, it exists. Whether you acknowledge the fact that in any given situation that you can be perceived to be less violent less guilty, less responsible for actions than a, a, than a sister of yours who presents more African or has a more traditionally African phenotype, then, you know, at that point, in the words of Dr. Wendy, you lack the range for the conversation. This is not about whether the world is handed to you because you're yellow. We can look at Giselle and Robert and see that that's an absolute goddamn lie. The world ain't going to just be handed to you because you're yellow. But the, the, there is a, an absolute bias. There is an implied bias. And then there is a, a an overt bias as it pertains to Black people. And not just Black women, but it does affect Black women and Black men differently. A lot of times Black men are criminalized and, and seen as more violent, more savage, and less human in the criminal justice system, in schools, and other places due to them being darker by non-Black people. Okay? and being seen as savage or being seen as more animalistic. And when it comes to black women, there's that aspect. And then there's the aspect within our own race of people and non-black people who matriculate in black spaces who will automatically be more sympathetic toward a woman who is non-black or is someone who has less melanin in their complexion. So we're not gonna pretend that it does not exist. And I don't care what you earned actually. 
I don't. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to earn what you have. And we have a lot of lighter complected black women who have worked hard and they are not just stellar, but there's something for us to be proud of. And in those situations, we are indeed proud of our sisters who are lighter, who have earned what they have. Everything I have, I've earned it too. So you earning what you have does not negate that colorism exists. It does not, it, it does not negate the fact that black women who are black presenting and traditionally black presenting are treated differently, are a lot of times treated unfairly. And I feel like not only do you lack range at that point, if that's your stance, but you also are a part of the problem when you are unable, for whatever reason, to acknowledge that that bias and the, the, the mistreatment exists towards your sisters who are of a darker hue just because it doesn't affect you doesn't mean that it's okay to turn a blind eye and, pre and pretend that it doesn't exist and say things like, well, I work for everything I got. That does not, that's the same as white people who say white privilege doesn't exist because I had to get a job. It doesn't change the fact that you can commit the exact same crime and be treated differently when it's time to mete out justice. So let's not do that. If you lack the range, it's okay. I won't judge you for it, but don't come over here gaslighting my sisters because then I got to call you on it. And it ain't no love loss either. Go ahead, sugar. Which one of y'all was talking? Hey, Nadine. I mean, you said that so eloquently. I really did forget what I had to say. I mean, because sometimes I think that we have to, it's unfortunate, but those of us who actually look, look black, we, whether we like it or not, we have to remain completely calm and concise and logically state our case when we're faced with people who are giving us gaslighting tactics. We have to. We simply have to, because if we do anything other than that, they will focus more on our tone and pretend to and pretend to not understand the actual words that are coming out of our mouths. So that's unfortunately, that's another clear example of colorism. If I were a yellow lady, I could just start crying and talk about how it made me feel bad. Mm -hmm. But because I am black from the rooter to the tutor. You got to turn it into a teacher moment. <laughs> praise the living God. Okay, because it, it is a blessing to be black. I'm so grateful that I'm black. And if I was going to complain about anything, it would probably be that I wasn't blacker. But God is good. God is good. He gave me this nice little spade nose. It's not as big as my mama's, but it's a spade. It's there. You know, I got my biscuit lips. My hair ain't kinky as it should be, but it got a little core to it. You know what I'm saying? So praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. But because of those things, when it's time for me to talk about injustices or unjust treatment or unfair treatment or biases toward black presenting women, unfortunately, I got to put down all the colloquialisms. I got to put down all the dialect. I got to do my best to remove all of the slang and, and Southern draw from my speech and just present the information raw and uncut. I don't, I don't have an option, you know, cause I'm not yellow enough to just cry and say it make me feel bad. Ain't that something? It's true though. Hmm. What a world, it's what a world. 100% true. Mm-hmm. But see this and this right here, that is the perfect example as to why even though I'm offended by this show, I'm offended by the way black women are treated. I'm offended also by the way the black women in the viewing audiences are gaslit and talked down to and insulted and put in a position because I know all of my sisters can't say, can't stay calm and state their case, right? So they're getting insulted on these social media platforms. They're getting insulted by content creators and their audiences who feed into that negative energy into those you know, horrible environments, because I feel like the energy you put out, you attract those sorts of people. So it's like, imagine our sisters are going to watch reviews because they do not want to, because they do not want to take part in this show because it's triggering. Right. And then you go to a content creator who is putting out all this vitriol and negativity toward black women. So they're attracting people who also have anti-black and anti-black woman sentiment. And so uh, imagine a sister in that environment who's in the chat or may decide to hit a screen yard and say, hey, this triggered me. This is upsetting. This is offensive. And they're getting bombarded, not just by the content creator, but by the audience that they've attracted. 
who is now then giving them another layer of victimization. So that's why I'm still in this space. That's why I'm still willing to watch this dumpster fire of a show. Because I feel like if not another black woman doing the right thing, then who? Mm -hmm. Who going to do it? Because honestly, I would much rather not. I have a question. Um, what do you think has to happen next season in order for, for the show to continue? Because I'd heard word. I, I noticed that Candace never publicly addressed the um the news that she was leaving the show. She acted as if it wasn't, you know. She said something big. today. She, she said, said something today, today. but prior prior to she didn't say anything mm -hmm. and i noticed that mm -hmm. so and you know also robin hasn't said anything as well to one's roommate so um a lot of I people speculating a I lot of people said, felt like it wasn't i'm listening i just was telling oh, i was a reading i was reading what a said a lot mm -hmm. of people felt like maybe it was just like a rumor it wasn't true but i noticed like she never denied it nor did she ever um confirm it uh, but Bravo the word was, but I Bravo literally just heard this last night. But on Bravo's official website, mm -hmm. they confirmed it. After she announced Yes, it, they did. Because see, actually, she it wasn't a rumor. She, she gave an interview to People Magazine. So she gave People Magazine the exclusive that she was quitting. Mm -hmm. And then Bravo.com confirmed it. Hi, Callie. Hey, Tamika Godbo. Hey, Junie B. Go ahead, baby. But yeah, she confirmed it with people and then Bravo confirmed it. And then she didn't speak on it again until today. Mm -hmm. I heard that they were trying to convince her to change her mind. Um, that's what I think was saying, but you know. I think today, that's, that's been a rumor, but I think today, if it were, if that were true, just operating under the guise that, that that's factual, that production was maybe, you know, trying to really do what they could to get her to come back for another season. Um, I... I think today confirmed that clip coming out is just like a solidified her decision. Like if it, it wasn't happen. already, because they lit it. That clip is so poorly edited. It's like one minute she's calm, things cross casually speaking. The next minute she's crying and she's like trying to fight off yes. an emotional reaction. Listen, what happened in between? I want to know. Just like I pointed out, like how did Andy go from this conversation to abruptly asking about it? Didn't even say the wine bottle. It like, like, like it had already been mentioned. And then now we're just hearing him say it. And ju let me get Junie B's comment and her avatar picture. Lord have mercy. If this baby ain't gorgeous, very Listen, beautiful. Yeah, let me let me tell you something, Junie B. Your mama born you well, baby. She did good work. This child is gorgeous. But then people will turn around and say that we're just jealous. It's tiring and old. Yes, it is, baby. And it's insulting when someone does something, I don't care who it is, to offend you, that's abusive to you, that is traumatic to you, that is hurtful to you. You are not jealous of that person. No one has a right to dismiss you being offended by calling you jealous. And mm -hmm. by them saying that, what they're saying is because you are a black woman and a gorgeous one, by the way, but because you're a black woman, that you must be jealous because you obviously have less value than this recessive creature with the dog eyes, which ain't nothing but a lie. Lord knows it's a lie for you. That's a pretty child. Y'all look at her. Mm. Now, I know we attract lots of pretty girls on this porch. Okay, we got <laughs> pretty girls up here talking to me right now. But this child here is something to see. No, it's very beautiful. Well, I, if I knew, let me tell you something. If I knew how to be jealous, I would be. I ain't never learned how to do it. But, you know, if I knew how to be jealous, I'd have a problem right now. All right, girl. And you right, too. Go ahead, baby. I just had to say something. That child no, said. it's fine. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, considering that she She's confirmed. Like, Y'all got it. <laughs> um, what what can they do to pivot? Because they they've relied on Candace. We've literally seen them kind of put her in a and quote unquote back her into a corner to see what's going to come out as a response. They they've depended. It's, it's been lazy production for a very long time, but they've been very dependent. Well, you on, ask what they can do to fix it. Well, correction. You when I say fix do? it, not to not to dispel the color colorism rumors because that's that's a right. done deal. 
but how can they save another season? Because I see Potomac getting put on hiatus. You want to know what they can seasons. do? You ask me. You, you, but you ask me now. You ask me. You want me to tell you or no? I'm, I'm listening. You want me to tell you? They can cancel it. That's what the hell they can do. They can cancel it. Ain't nothing can save this show. Nothing. Do you know what they would have to do to save this show? They would have to pay money, move Lanethia to DMV, put her on the show, bring Phaedra, bring Phaedra, then don't stop there. Mm -mm. Mm -bye. Mm -mm. Then they're going to have to go all the way to Lagos and get Chioma and, and move her from Lagos in her new Lamborghini she has got for her birthday. Move her all the way over to Potomac and put her on the show. Then they're going to have to fire Andy Cohen. Then, and they would have to fire him openly and allow viewers to throw rotten eggs at him. And then um, Giselle would have to be fired, but she would have to be humiliated and then fired. And then um, they would have to put all the color back on Mia that she scrubbed off with that Brillo pad from her mama. And maybe and she they just did some micro needling earlier. I seen a video of her doing some micro needling on her face. I'm like, I don't, you know no that I don't know about no micro needling, but I know that heifer went and got some lipo because she was over there shaped like a um like a parallelogram, and it still ain't much better. Her lips was percolating too, like Karen's. But this is the thing, Mia came on that show with them cold cut lips, just hanging off her face, deflated, looking like somebody's beach ball with a hole in it. She came in. She came on the show like that. Every time she talk, her lip was just doing this. And production was shady as hell. Her first season because they kept catching the profile, the side view, so all you could see was this. Mm hmm. Them things been nasty. Lord and sis, say the regulars can't hang with Nene and Phony Fei Fei. They can't. They they crying by candy. I'm telling you, they, they'll be in a better help commercial. They'll be in therapy. They'll be in therapy. <laughs> they can't they can't deal with no real stomp down sisters. You got Wendy, who while we like her and she has blended well, Wendy ain't really like, you know, she's not a black American sister like that. She ain't no sister sister. And then Candace, you know, little miss grew up in the country club. She might, she you know, she could cut a little bit because she does the daughter, but she can't really get down. If they get a whole sister sister on that show, girl, please, all them hookers are being in therapy. All of them. All of them. And mainly because they can't keep up verbally. They don't know how to be shady. They can't, they can't think quick on their feet. They don't have no comebacks. They would have to hire one of us to write their comebacks for them. And they couldn't pay me. I wouldn't help them. Not Kelly say Mia face look like she got Botox on Clarence. Not Clarence. Mm -hmm. All I says if they ever the scene of Glizzard losing her ish after Monique <laughs> bought that binder, I'll consider watching season nine. Girl, me too. <laughs> me too. I, I want them to play because they say she was dropping f bombs, screaming, cussing, and all. Really? Max say not a parallelogram. Yes, Mia was up there looking like a parallelogram. She was looking like a real good geometry problem. Why, why was she why was she losing her stuff? It was more it was more stuff in her Monique had. She lost it because Monique Monique like laid her out. Laid yes, her with Chris. Out. Chris laid her out too. I mean, I, I heard yep. that he, yep, Chris he told about politely got her together. Like he wasn't like all aggressive or nothing, but he told about but herself he told and about she got mad. Thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you got to be specific because remember, she we was trying to have her. security. She was saying Chris threatened to put hands on them and stuff. He never got out his seat. From what I heard, he wasn't yelling or nothing crazy nope. like that. But he, he definitely gathered her up. Gather. Like a two-inch ponytail gather. I would pay money to see that. I would, too. I would too, cause they say she lost it. She was dropping f bombs and cussing and going off. I say, oh, Glizzard, not not the Glizzy. Not Miss Stoic. Yeah, Stoic, my foot. And she need to stop doing that with her face. 
is. That's why she got all them lines in there looking like, looking like a piece of ball up notebook paper all the time. She need to stop holding her face like that. Because after a while, your misery shows outside. It ain't no misery, girl. Sin disfigures. That's what happens when you're evil. So y'all, everybody listening should say they prayers every night because when you don't pray, and you everybody's evil. so excited about her, mm -hmm. but it's getting ready to be a flop. One Gordon is in on it. Like he, whatever anger he had, he's literally calmed down since then. He understands what they got to do to get this money. I'm not interested in seeing that man that she with. That's clearly. And it's always wearing sunglasses uh -huh. indoors. Like, I, I just, Mia's going to be a flop next year, but they are so did excited to see, see her. Did y'all see this comment? <laughs> so didn't somebody, uh, this, didn't somebody last week say Mia was pretty? Yes. <laughs> somebody said Mia was pretty. <laughs> Who said that? Ah, now you sound like Portia. Who said that? <laughs> One of our sisters, I love her so much, my sunflower. She has said that she has said Mia was pretty, and I had to put that picture up because I'm like, show it to me. <laughs> Cause I ain't see it. <laughs> mm. Yep, instead of letting the audience see it, production covered it up. Lady T, thank you for being 252. Listen, y'all be cracking me up in these comments. I'm so glad y'all came up here because the stuff y'all saying, y'all would have been saying all this in the comments. And I had to been trying to read it and keep up. I'm so grateful. <laughs> what? I'm serious. Everything, y'all, everything, everything, everything that we can describe, everything that we can describe about Robin and Mia is you know, it's a very all about her sitting over there sniggling. But those are the reasons why the dark skinned girls aren't jealous of them. Why can't be the other way around? Why the, why the, why they can't be jealous of the dark skinned girls? Because that's clearly what's going on. They want Winnie to be jealous so bad, and it's so sad. They that really, lady, really like she is dark. This is a matter of them telling you, We feel like you have less value because you have more melanin. And how dare you not feel like you have less value? We feel like your value is less, so you should be jealous. We're gonna tell the story that you're jealous, we're gonna try to edit it to make it look like you're jealous. We're gonna push the narrative that you're jealous because in our minds, there's no way that you could not be because to us somebody who looks like that is what's more valuable and i'm like child on what planet how much crack did you smoke before you looked at a part because, because i would want to know around. how much crack did you smoke before you could look at a robert dixon or a glizzard and say somebody would be jealous how how like I, 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 do i want to live in a, in a shed in the woods do i want my hair to look like I starred in Alfred Hitchcock's Birds and the birds was picking at my weave. Do I want to look like a middle-aged white man with good credit? Do I want to, you know, walk on water because my legs is always swollen 10 times they normal size? Do I want, you know, to be Do ignorant? Do I want to be ignorant and talk like 12 years a slave? He looked like he in high school. Like, what the hell would they be jealous of? They can't say that she look better than that. Either one of them look better than Wendy. You don't. You don't. You, absolutely got, not. you can't say you got more money than her. You don't. They can't say your husband found her. He ain't. You can't say the children look better. They don't. You you you're not more accomplished at all. You you're not more educated. Not on your not life. Not even. Not even close. You're not more successful at what? Selling them hats and socks. Not even that. On them on GNA. Like there's not like literally not what on earth would. Like when someone says, and not just the not just production and Bravo and all that, even some of these content creators, I want y'all to look at who is your enemy, okay? Black women, I want y'all to learn to recognize your enemies, okay? If someone is saying to you, even as the audience, these women, Mia Thornton, with her her coochie is Grand Central Station, her coota pop is like the arches of McDonald's, one million served. Anybody can get in, and some of them probably ain't even got out. It's probably men still still stuck in there waiting on a rescue party as we speak. Okay, this heifer was at the evening gown, lobster and steak strip club. <laughs> Tragic heifer. Your mama and daddy had to adopt a man for you to marry after his mama died because you couldn't catch man. You've been looking like a boy your whole life. We saw them high school. Cool pictures. You always was given manish. You always look like Ric Flair slash Larry Bird in the face. Your whole life, you strong in the face. 
Okay? Just like I'm strong in the Lord, you strong in the faith. Your whole life. You up here with shoulders looking like you always posing for a muscle poster. Like, this is you. You don't bathe well. The man done told everybody about it. He told you you're not attracted to him. He done tried to rip your arm off in a car, though. He done told you you're making skin crawl. Your churn be looking at you sideways. You got Giselle, who sat up here and rubbed a foot rag on her face. Her legs look like flotation devices every day of the week. She live in a she shed in the woods. And any man come within 100 feet of her, take off running. And the fact that she aging like a bruised banana and the skin on her neck keeps dropping like a like a gym sock when they tell you you're jealous of that they're telling you that these tragic characters as tragic as they are you're less than them because you got color in your skin you should be offended black women i'm just telling you you have every right every reason to be offended there's no way in the hell Imagine somebody telling a beautiful black educated sister, you jealous of somebody like Ashley Darby. How come? This girl ain't even got enough hair to cover her whole scalp. This baby hairline start in the middle of her in the middle of her head like she's a Hare Krishna. She got two little babies and I ain't going to talk about them, but you know, I'm just saying sometimes children look elderly and I'm going to leave it at that. She got to sleep with a whole corpse to get her cash. And her mama is Sister Underbridge with a bad wig. Anybody tell you any of these tragic people that you're jealous of them, they're telling you that your blackness makes you less than. You should be offended. Be highly offended. Nisha, look at yourself. Pretty as you are. Now, imagine somebody telling you that you're jealous of something look like them things. Uh, On what day? That's the face out. I have a brain. I don't, I don't see thing. it. If somebody say Nisha just jealous of Robert, how? How? Uh-uh. How? How, how? How could I be jealous of a man? Unless you got penis envy, I don't know. I mean, we're not even in the same. We we're not even in the same conversation. Malaya says she could never be jealous of a woman who looked like Jim Carrey in the mask. Oh, and words of Dr. Ben, honey, when God made black women, he was just showing off like we something to see. So I'm trying to figure out how you got a group of, of some of the most dynamic and gorgeous women on the planet. No two of us are alike, not even the twins. But you you telling me something as mystical, exotic and beautiful as black women should be jealous of something that is clear adjacent and looks mannish as hell. And the other one is ball up notebook paper in the face. And, and the other one got Oscar Mayer lunch meat hanging off her face and actually <laughs> her, her, her forehead go all the way to the back of her ears. This is what black women supposed to be jealous of? Really? Membership includes. How? What the hell? Ace, you so crazy, because that's what I said. What, what was she holding in her mouth while they was attacking Candace? Oh, Andrew Mack say it's not them sharing fault. They dead is a fossil. It sure ain't. It ain't. It ain't the baby's fault. It be like that, you know, when the children have an old daddy. It's like that sometimes. Right. That's the real life. <laughs> Nisa say, couldn't be me. I don't need suspenders right. to attach my clavicle, sternum, and master it process to hold up my neck. Girl, you better tell it. <laughs> Woo! Oh, lie. Yes, girl. We do not need no suspenders, no garters, or nothing to hold the meat together on us. Mm -mm. No, honey. That melanin gives us lots of elasticity, lots of collagen in there. Lots of collagen in there. Hey, Brandon Martin. Like, literally, these people have worked so hard to try to make black women feel like, yeah, you more beautiful, but you should be, you, you should be jealous of us just because. Right, that's what Wendy say. Jealous of this, jealous of this. <laughs> okay, Jay Della Ray says it's Ashley forehead goes all the way to her ears for me. It does, it does. Like she about to be in one of them old school ninja films, one like a Shaolin monk, baby. 
and shaved off the front. All she need to do is take the pebble from the master's hand. And then what with the most video will be the face of the show. What you say, Nisha? I said, in what world is the most mediocre one of them all the face of the show? I'm trying to understand it. I'm trying to understand she is, it. She is the lowest on the totem pole. Literally. You wouldn't have spent 900000 on something that wasn't even finished. That's, Child, that's, that's I'm just saying. She is the most ditzy bra at the table because you yeah. are... Like, how are you the face and you have nothing behind it? You're not... Okay, you went to college. What do you have? A bachelor's degree? That's it. Okay, that's in the most... That's it. Okay. You can go get that on the IEP. It's true. So, But, but my thing is like... Else but even, on. But the, only, the only honest, thing is... That your only claim to fame is being Jamal Bryant's ex-wife. That ain't no claim to fame. That's a point. Well, that's she think it is, but that's, that's a, a point it's, of it's a, very, it's a it's a fame actually. But she thinks that's, that's a reason. That's a reason to be depressed. It, it's only been married. Like you don't have anything else going on. And then in the nine years, like you said, <laughs> six, nine years you've been on here earning your own income, you have not done anything with it. But not only that, this is my problem with it. My problem you is started a podcast. Even, but even beyond the cast. When we just get to the content creators alone who will sit up and tell black women, y'all are jealous of, jealous of what? Like you literally talking to a collection of some of the most stunning women on the planet to tell us, educated ladies, business owners, successful women, that we're jealous of that. That? Let me do it like Wendy. We, we hating on this. Really, we hating on this. I want you to bear in mind that most of us, when we get on the internet or we're home and we're hanging out, most of us do not have on a face full of makeup, and we still don't look like them. Robert had on Robert had a full beat on that face. A full beat. Find the clip of that. Hold on, sis. A full beat. I don't have not a smudge or nothing, and I still don't look like that. Still, hard that's her name, hard baby. When Karen Hugo told her she was a hard forty, she wasn't lying. Right. The, got a 44. face like the rough side of the mountain. Got a face like the rough side of the mountain. She coming up low. <laughs> like, uh, no, who said? Somebody said she looked like she was uh, roll wet. I mean, roll hard and put away wet. <laughs> that's what I said about her. Rolled hard and put away wet. She looked rough. She looked like somebody done rode her a country mile on a rut road. She looked terrible. Mia sitting up there done, done, done ruined her whole house with her own coochie. She done let so many men run through her. She whistled when she walked. And, you, and we you supposed sold, to be jealous of that. You so dense that your, that your way to make yourself any kind of notoriety or anything I mean, I'm not knocking the hoes. Like I said, I'm from Ocala. Some of my best friends is hoes. I don't know. But you you have kids, you you have to change your behavior. But you tore up your house with your own coochie. You took your own cat and ruined your house. And we supposed to call to check on you. Like I said, it's not my fault you whistle when you walk. It's not my fault either, but when it you have kids, it, you ain't, have my, it ain't my fault. It is hold on, it ain't my fault that if you go for a walk on a oh windy day, God. it sounds like a Kenny G concert. That ain't my fault. <laughs> Who asked you? And you throwing your child I wonder, under I wonder the how many tunes can she play down there. How many tunes can you play down there? And you throwing your son That's under the bus for, for, for to be in her, to be Bravo fan. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't really even care about that. I, I, right now, my mind, my mouth is on the fact that we have content creators, a lot of them male, yes, 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 okay yes, 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 who tell black women that that's what we jealous of. Speak on it. I don't whistle when I walk. My lips ain't hanging off my face. These are authentic. They might be biscuits, but I had them from birth. I ain't need no fillers. My neck don't hang, okay. My neck don't hang low, it don't wobble to the floor. 
It don't do none of that. I'm I don't look like a hard 40. I'm just saying. And my feet real pretty. They're not swollen and bloated. I'm not I'm not walking on swollen on, on swollen logs. My <laughs> hair come all the way to the front of my head. And I ain't never been on a curb. I ain't Friend never been curb. outdoors. I ain't never I ain't never slept under a bridge. So how on earth can you tell me a whole me that I should be jealous of that? We're hating. We're hating on all this. Uh, Ain't no what I had both of my parents. Yeah, you're right. I had both of mine too. My, yeah, my daddy actually married my mama. He yeah. bought her a house for a wedding present. He put her in a house. My daddy didn't do like Giselle daddy and run off and leave her mama to have to go work like a man to take care of her children. My daddy didn't do that. My daddy cherished my black mama. Mm -hmm. okay. my, my daddy loved my mama dirty draws and she wasn't even nice. <laughs> she wasn't. <laughs> But I grew up in the house of my mama and my daddy. My dad is a whole business owner. We own property. We were well taken care of. Right. Very well taken care of. My mama mm -hmm. ain't work on a pie train. Find a clip of mm -hmm. when, Wendy, when Wendy said, jealous of that? She looks so, she looks so beautiful. Jealous she was so cute. What she say? She hating on all this? this? Hating on this? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get some of these comments. I'm trying to get some of Shashi that came in. Hey, sis, where you been, girl? I miss you. Uh, my sis say, not balled up notebook paper in the face. I'm back and I'm dying laughing, but it's all facts. It's true. It's true. Not a bachelor's degree in communications, baby. Not that. That's what she got. Uh -huh. Oh, that's sad. I'm that girl that so actually forehead reminds me of a football. Yes, I've heard. I've heard that before. Jim Bunny said that, that tied butt podcast. Who listening to that? A bunch of sad, um, clear women, probably. I'm about to say a bunch of, um, a, a bunch of the old kind because that's who defending them. Kelly say, Can you imagine resting your whole future and your kids' livelihood on waiting for a fossil to pass on to the underworld? Team Black and Beautiful have their own wealth. You better say it again, okay? J.O. say that's sick. I've unsubscribed from a few for that very reason. I agree, and I, that's what you should do. When people are insulting you, you don't continue to support them. Awa says, Maybe Glizzard is hiding her business and accomplishments the way she hid her relationships. Oh, you mean the imaginary ones? Okay, I, I can take that. I can take it. Lord says, say a hard 45. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the comments. Say, I never seen 45 struggle so much. Amen. Road hard, yes. Oh, yes. I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up because y'all y'all be getting me in these comments now. Max say the three darker skinned women are the most successful educated most successful education, marriage, and career. Amen. That's true. Yes, girl. Whistle while you twerk. But for her, it's whistle when you walk. Whistle when you walk. I'm, I'm surprised she don't end up picking up chairs when she tries to stand up. It's a lot of suction going on down there. A lot of suction. Yep. The hair do be looking a little dry. The hair be looking a little dry. Miss Sparkle is back. Hey, girl. That's why it's be be in communications, but she don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. I told y'all that help her pay somebody to take her finals. She she's she's just not giving. Me a face remind me of a seahorse. Now that's creative. Nisha ain't that creative? Yeah, it is. Everybody can name a million things that she looks like. I wouldn't have never came up with a seahorse. Ray Ray say it's time for Karen to stop drinking because questioning the victim is just irresponsible. Amen. And if Nika had any sense, she wouldn't want to come back either because she got too much going on for herself. They don't like her either. She's married with a nice husband that's a doctor. She's an attorney. They don't like you either. They can deal with her because you know. <laughs> she's the you know, she's she's one of them where the jokes write themselves. The jokes just write themselves when it comes to her. You know, that's the, that's basically the only type of black women they want around when they can feel like they got something up on you. And they can have something up on her. You think what? You know, girl, this, um, Neckbone is still wearing wigs that she stole off the set from the grudge. 
in the rain. So, you know, they don't mind her, just like they don't mind Big Reese. She, no, that's the, oh, she is terrible. She is terrible. That's going to be saying, why did you come in there with that boot on like you did all of this? Just lying, setting up stuff. Lord, now they say they can't unsee the seahorse. See, Cheryl, you started that. You started that. Say, um, necrosis don't have anything better to do, sadly. I believe that. I believe I definitely believe anytime you'll go from LA all the way to Maryland just to get on a TV show and you ain't got nothing to offer but a lie calling an old woman a witch. We know you ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> that we know. Okay. But listen, you got any final comments for the people before we jump down? Because I do need to eat something. And because I really haven't eaten anything except for them few crackers y'all seen me eat online. So I you did and technically. Y'all, y'all my witness. Y'all saw me eat the crackers, right? <laughs> Everybody seen me eat the crackers? I didn't see. You ain't seen me. Come on no, now. I, didn't see. I, 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 sure. I was putting my phone down because I've been there. Okay, what? You supposed to have my back. I'm te- I, I had the crackers. Me trying to work still. I just can do what I want to do because I work for myself. Cracker. I heard her. I ate a cracker. Y'all seen me eat them crackers. Poetic lyrics say she seen me eat them. Thank you. I just need a witness. I can't believe Nisha gonna leave me hanging like that. I'm sorry, sis. <laughs> I had the I phone. had proof. I seen it. I seen it. Okay. You know what? You're right. I seen okay. it. <laughs> Hi, Jicky Jicky. I like your name. Welcome. So next season, I need Wendy to focus on a happy family and business, even if they ice her out. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Did you hear yeah. them say they made two million on sales? Yeah, two million, two, two million in reaper sales in, in less than six months. I, you know, that legal weed must be something because I've known Negroes to sell reefer. And they made a million dollars in a year or two or three. <laughs> so if he got a connect so good that he could make a million a million dollars in less than six months selling reefer, that must be some good reefer. Now it's I don't pack, smoke. It's I ain't packaging smoke. and marketing. Yes. Uh, why? Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. She said thank you. Thank you too. I love you for that. Thank you so much. Yes, it's hot. It's happy, Eddie. Ray Ray say everybody hot. Not me. I don't smoke no reefer. Mm-mm. Some of y'all be smoking reefer, but I'm gonna try. I want. I want to try it. Though. I do want to try it. You gonna try some reefer, or you gonna try Happy Eddie? Reefer? I want to try Happy Eddie. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Okay, Shasha say she seen me eat some crackers. Thank you. I got witness <laughs> this time. Yes, room full of people. Y'all seen me eat the crackers. Okay, so listen, final thoughts, and then I, I promise I'm gonna go eat something. I don't know what, but I'm, well, I'm gonna go eat something. I just want to, I just want it over with, and I can, I can gladly say, I want to go to terminate it because I know that Wendy will be okay without it. Your phone went low. I was sitting here, I'm like, does it mean? Oh, I said, I want say it again. I want it all to be dismantle it, cancel it, because. And I can say that security because I know when you will be okay on my own. The rest of them I don't care about. Damn. It's like you in a hole. Was you got an earpiece or something? And yeah, it yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I said I want the whole thing over with and just dismantle it and cancel it because I know Wendy Wendy will be okay on her own. That's the only person I'm concerned about. Yep, that's true. That's true. Okay. Well, sis, thank you so much. Listen, don't let this be the last time because you helped me out this time. Y'all be in the chat saying all this good stuff and I miss a lot of comments even though I try to get everybody comments. But if y'all just come talk to me, then we don't miss nothing. You're right. And then next time you gonna help me with my story that I, that you saw me because you was yeah I next well, I got you next time but you was I was just listening just on the whim and you was like I'm like okay I'm like she's saying everything that I said like that I was thinking like 
I'm telling you, I done had to like get off of people's pages and stuff. Like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I can't listen to this rhetoric. I cannot. Yeah, because it's, it's like I feel like some of the pages, even some of the people I, I I I love and I try to support them. Like when it comes to these issues, when you're blatantly being abusive to black women, I can't support that. I cannot. Am am like. I don't know. My mother is my mother is dark skin, so I know I've watched my aunt say, "Where my chocolate niece at? Where my pretty chocolate?" I don't like any of that stuff. I don't like it. Yeah, like even though you know they might mean well, they don't. I know, know they don't mean well. I just don't like it. And then someone we had a conversation. Some people will think that I, I'm not supposed to relate because I'm not dark. But I have yeah, dark I've family. gotten it. I've you gotten it. Like what you I've mad for? Like what you mad? I got there from someone on YouTube trying to explain to me that, oh, you're not the darkest, so I'm sure this, that, and the third. And it's like, my sister took complexion after my father. I saw firsthand the difference in how I was treated compared to my sister. I know full well. Right. And that's, but, what, yeah. I, that's what you, that's what those, you're um, not even dark. Why you care? Like, it does not matter. Because those are my sisters. That's why. Because those are my you. sisters. I know exactly what's happening. And like you're toxic attitude toward them even though it may not directly apply to me it affects me because i love them exactly and so, so when i see people who say well i'm light skinned i work that's given i don't love my sisters and i don't care if you treat them unfairly that's and exactly, I don't, that's exactly what it's saying without saying no yeah i don't like that it's I'm screw y'all it's screw y'all because i got the i got the right here so skew y'all right like, and the no, thing is and there's no such thing as the right hue. Like there's no such thing. And but that's that's the attitude that they want to perpetuate. And I feel like as sisters, we have to stand up at some point and say, This is inappropriate. That's why I took time to go live today. This is these are my closing thoughts too. I took time to go live today to discuss this because when I do part three of the reunion, you know, we got to get through the entire reunion. But right. this one segment. In my opinion, bared an it, it bared an entire conversation. It it was worthy of an entire conversation, and there was no way we could have that entire conversation and then cover the entire part three of that reunion. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sunday we got to get through a whole reunion. Today I wanted to take time and just get through. This is what you're doing. This is what we see. This is how we're receiving it. This is what's happening. You know what I mean? That type of thing. But if ever, if all women can just Put aside the color part and just get with the fact that you are a woman and you know what i'm saying say something about this or boy you know what i'm saying boycott it don't give your viewership whatever like it's, it has nothing to do with whatever color you is it's just it's a, yeah it's about the, it's about toxic. the fact it's like toxic. color com color comes into it because that's why our sisters are being mistreated hey anisa michelle but our own personal complexion should not matter. You should be able to point out that something is wrong and it's happening. And I don't care if you're somebody who tries to favor me over a sister of mine that's darker. If you do it in my presence, I'm calling it out and I'm calling it wrong. And that's just what it is. And I'm going to stand with my sister every single time. There's never going to be a time when I don't stand with my sister. Right. Yeah, it's, always, it's always going to be a non-starter for me. I'm definitely oh. not looking at it next seat. I'm definitely not looking at the next seat. I'm definitely not. And that's something I can say with absolution. I will listen to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I like the support. But I, I'm just at 44. I know how to check myself out of situations that's, that, you know, don't bring me peace. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's funny, okay, whatever. But stuff like this, I don't have to. It's voluntarily yeah, no, you don't, don't have, have to, to do look that at to it. yourself. That's true. That's at that point you're engaging in self harm. Um, like I said, I've stated my reasons, and if if I have a reason, then I will suffer through it, and then I will remain in this space to make sure that there's at least one place where Black women can go and we can talk about what happened, and we can be open about the things that are offensive and harmful to other Black women without being told that you're being jealous. So I'm going. You know, if there's a sister in the mix and i need to kind of be that voice then i'm gonna do that because i think i'm pretty good at it you know especially since i don't talk like i'm in high school i i think we need someone who's able to actually articulate what's happening um as best as
It's possible. I may not be the best person to do it, but I'm going to do the best I can. And hopefully maybe somebody who can articulate things better will come along. But until then, I'll, I'll just do my best. And we thank you. I appreciate that. Y'all be hanging with the girl. So listen, we're going to get up out of here. Tell them people, tell your sisters and cousins them bye. Because us finna go. I got to eat something. Because I'm Child. getting dizzy. Like I'm, my stomach not hungry, but I'm getting dizzy in a mug. So I got to eat something. The crackers ain't holding. Ciao. <laughs> bye, Nish. See ya. Bye, boo. All right, y'all. So I'm going to chew on something because, like I said, I'm getting a little bit dizzy. <laughs> Just a little. And it's not nobody's fault. It's mine. I ate I ate a couple of crackers, but unfortunately, the crackers are not crackering. So I need to go and chew on something else. I love you guys. This was a lot of fun. Thank you to everybody who supported the channel. Um, thank you for the super chats, cash apps. Um, super stickers, Sabra Hardy to Adorable, Dana Scott, Cassandra Ellis, Love My Dogs too, Jan Bunny, Ace, Nisha, Awa. Um, did I get everybody? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Because I want to thank everybody. Y'all have been so supportive today. You know, I don't get a lot of support. So when I do, I have to say thank you to everybody. I can't skip nobody. Thank you to Alexis. Oh, come on, phone. Hold on. Thank you to Alexis, to Patricia Joaquin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I, I think at this point, I done got everybody beautiful black. How you doing, boo? So listen, I'm going to go eat something. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. You know what time it is. Um, Hey, Ian, thank you for being like 274. So you know what time it is, y'all. If you didn't hit the like button on the way in, Please make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Hit your notification bell. Make sure you click all so you will know every time that we go live over here on this good channel. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed because you know we're happy to have you here. And you're always welcome. If you want to join channel membership, there's a join button beneath the video and a membership link in the description box. Now, also in the description box, we got the link for our Royal Family Merchandise Store. You can get your crown gear and your classic black and gold or your emerald crown designs. And there's a link for our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together for our all, all of our own respective homes or whatever. And there's a link to my Amazon wish list in case you want to send me snacks, pens, extra notebooks so I can keep taking notes so we can keep coming in here talking and all that good stuff, okay? So listen, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I love y'all so, so, so much. I appreciate you being here and y'all enjoy the rest of your day and remember i gotta throw this in because i have to say it because it wouldn't be me if i didn't say it right it wouldn't be me so in case no one else says it to you remember god loves you i love you and there's really nothing you can do about it okay so don't forget that talk to you later bye